Welcome to the Unreal Engine 5 full beginners course. In this course, we're going to be learning the basics of virtual production and 3D animation inside of Unreal Engine 5. Firstly, we'll start by covering the fundamentals of Unreal Engine 5, including its interface, uh, the navigation tools, and other essential tools. And once you have a solid foundation of the basics, we're going to be diving into a series of projects which are specifically designed to enhance specific skills and showcase your creativity. Now, these projects are going to be extremely helpful because by the end of this course, you're going to have a solid portfolio which you can use to get freelance work or get hired by any design studio. So without any further ado, let's just jump into the projects and I'm going to be showing you which projects we're going to make. So I have this folder opened in my computer and we're going to go over all the projects so these are basically the nine projects which we're going to be covering in this course uh, so let's start with the first one so if i just play this animation you're going to see that it is an interior animation uh, of a living room and we're going to be doing the lighting uh the texturing and everything from scratch we're going to be doing everything inside of unreal engine 5 we're going to learn how to import the models inside of unreal engine 5 from the internet uh we are going to be using a little bit of blender in some of these projects however if you don't know the basics of blender that is not a problem we are going to be learning how to uh sort of use the basic Basic tools of blender inside this course so just don't worry if you don't know the basics of blender right uh so next up we have this project in which there is a car uh, we're going to be importing this car inside of unreal engine 5 then we're going to be creating this whole garage environment the reason why i included this project was so i can show you guys how to create indoor environments and basically how to sort of use megascans library to sort of create a whole environment inside of unreal engine 5. we're also going to be covering indoor lighting because you can see we are using these windows uh, to light this whole scene we're going to be covering how to add textures to objects how to um, create the whole scene and it's going to be a very fun and very good experience for you guys plus you're going to have this amazing render by the end of this uh, project as well next up we're going to be rendering that same exact car but this time we're going to be rendering it inside a forest the reason why i included this project is so that we can learn how to create forests inside of unreal engine 5 and again how to use megascans assets uh, to create natural environments and how to create essentially forests apart from that we're also going to be learning how to add fog and how to add how to fill the background with trees and stuff like that uh, so all that is going to be covered in this project Next up, we're going to be creating this animation right here, which you see on your screen right now. Uh, so this is basically a cave scene in which we are going to be using Megascans assets again uh, to create this whole natural environment from scratch. So basically in this project, we're going to be learning how to do uh, lighting of natural environments using the sun and everything. Uh, we're also going to be learning foliage uh, in this project, in this um, scene. So basically this is another variation of that previous render. Uh, however, the skills are pretty much the same, except for in this, you're going to have to use foliage. Uh, right so that is going to be covered in this course as well uh, so i'm going to close that next up we're going to be rendering this car inside of uh, again a grass field um and so in this uh, in this project we're going to be learning how to create sunset lighting how to make your scene looks uh, scenes look realistic and how to add characters in your scenes um uh, in, in unreal engine 5 so we're going to be using mixamo characters you can basically animate them you can essentially uh, just do whatever you want with them uh make them do whatever you want but yeah we're going to be learning that inside this project Next up, we're going to be learning uh, how to sort of sculpt landscapes using this project, because in this project, you're going to see that the landscape is not even, it's very uneven. Uh, so apart from foliage, we've also sculpted this landscape. And so that's uh, what we're going to be learning in this project, right? Uh, and we're also going to be creating this amazing scene while we're at it. Right, next up, we're going to be creating this um, bicycle scene inside of a, an old city or a village or something like that. So basically in this project, the main purpose is going to be to sort of light our scenes realistically and how to make your scenes look a lot uh, a lot more realistic, how to uh, sort of play around with the normals and the roughness and everything to make your scene look a lot more realistic, right? We're going to be doing the texturing of this uh, bicycle. We're going to be adding these assets and we're going to be using some depth of field with foliage as well. So our next two projects are going to be related to um, essentially product visualization and how to create, how to showcase products uh, inside of Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so basically these two renders are going to be made in this course. Now do note that we are also going to be modeling these uh, objects inside of Blender 3D. However, if you don't uh, want to sort of get into the details of, details of Blender 3D um, and if you, for example, don't understand Blender 3D or you don't want to learn it right now, you just want to focus on Unreal Engine 5, I'm going to show you how to download models from the internet and uh, just follow along with this uh, tutorial. However, uh, I would definitely recommend you to sort of learn Blender 3D modeling as well because that's going to help you a lot um, in when you're doing freelance projects and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be making these two hyper-realistic renders. And finally, we're going to be doing another uh, interior animation. This time we're going to be making a full apartment. Um, and again, we're also going to be using some Blender in this project as well. So it is definitely recommended to sort of know the basics of Blender 3D. However, if you don't know, the, if you don't know even the basics of Blender 3D, it's going to be fine. Uh, I'm going to guide you along the process. 
And if you have any questions, you can definitely feel free to ask me. Um, apart from that, yeah, we're going to be creating this whole scene. And so let's just let it finish because it has um, this scene, ha this animation has essentially all the rooms in your whole apartment. So it has a bedroom, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room, and stuff like that, right? So everything is going to be covered in this course. All right, so those are the animations and renders which we're going to be making in this course. I really hope you learn a lot in this course and this course is very comprehensive. Uh, it's going to take you over a lot of projects and honestly, the problem, the main problem which I faced when I was learning Unreal Engine 5 was the fact that the courses were too lecture based and they weren't really project based that much, uh, which is why I lost interest uh, very quickly in a lot of courses. But I made sure not to do that in this course and I made sure to make this course as project based as I can uh, so that you guys don't lose interest. Plus, you guys have an amazing portfolio by the end of this course as well. And so, yeah, that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope to see you in the course soon. Goodbye. All right, so welcome to the course, guys. Uh, firstly, we're going to be learning how to um, download Unreal Engine 5 uh, because obviously we're going to need it to uh, proceed. Uh, so firstly, you're going to need the Epic Games Launcher. Now you just have to go to the internet, just go to Google Chrome or whatever browser you use and just search on the internet, just search for Epic Games Launcher. Once you do that, you can just click on the first link. Um, it just says store.epicgames.com and then you can just download Epic Games Launcher right here. Okay, so you're just going to click that link and it's going to download. I'm not going to do that because I already do have it downloaded. However, you can just create your Epic account as well. I'm going to sign in using this button right here. And then once you're inside the Epic Games Launcher, I'm just going to close this out. Uh, so what you have to do is you simply have to go to Unreal Engine 5. Just go down to Unreal Engine 5. Then you're going to go to Library. And then it's just going to uh, say whichever version you want to install. It, obviously, it's not going to be installed in your computer, uh, but you just have to go and click this button right here. For me, it says launch, but for you, it's going to say download, right? So once you do that, then it's going to say launch and we can just go ahead and open Unreal Engine 5, right? Uh, now, it is asking me to update, but I'm not going to do that right now. But yeah, let's just go ahead and launch this. And... Yeah, so basically this epic games launcher is pretty helpful it's pretty it's a pretty useful thing we're going to come back to this when we are uh when we download assets uh because we're going to go to the marketplace and we can download materials from there and all kinds of stuff from there so yeah this is a very helpful tool and you're going to have to you're going to want to have to keep it um right so the size of unreal engine by the way is around 57 gigabytes uh for me at least uh, in this version obviously it is going to change in the future so just um keep that in mind you ha you do have to give it a, some time to download yeah so i'm just going to wait for it to open and i'll see you when it's done right so once you are in the unreal project browser uh you're going to see all your projects which you have created but obviously i'm assuming that you don't have any projects because you just downloaded unreal engine 5 now so what are you going to do is that you're going to go to games and we're going to be creating a blank project now you do have some presets uh, for example if you're in the car industry and you want to render out some cars then you can just go to the photo studio and you can use this However, I would obviously recommend you to just use a blank project and just create everything from scratch because that just gives you the most flexibility, right? You have the most flexibility and the most options when you are working with um, a clean slate, right? So I'm just going to do that. And if you have an RTX graphic card, by the way, if you have an NVIDIA RTX series graphic card, uh, then I would want you to turn on ray tracing because that's going to make your projects look a little more realistic. Uh, it is going to make some difference however obviously it's not going to make that big of a difference so even if you don't have an rtx graphic card just leave it off um, it doesn't really matter that much uh, anyway so this is your project location and this is your project name you can just set the project location to wherever you want i'm just going to leave it at default and the project um this um name i'm just going to call this unreal engine 5 basics course actually it's too long i'm just going to call it unreal engine 5 basics and i'm just going to leave it at blueprint and the quality, I'm going to set it to maximum because obviously we're not going to be going over the game development part of Unreal Engine 5. We're just going to be uh, creating animations and stuff like that, right? So we're just uh, going to use the maximum quality preset, right? Make sure all the settings are the same as mine and then just go ahead and create the project. Now, this might take some time. I think this is going to take a few minutes depending on how strong your computer is because it has to compile all the textures and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I will see you when it's done. All right, so Unreal Engine 5 has opened. And if you're confused right now what is going on, you don't understand anything, just don't worry about that. Most of the things we're not even going to touch. I'm just going to show you everything that we need to know before we start uh, with the projects. And just don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about the complexity of this um, software. It's pretty easy and very intuitive to use, right? Uh, so you're either going to see this in your viewport. Uh, this, by the way, is called the viewport. Or you're going to see, uh, just ignore what I'm doing, by the way. I'm going to go to another level. Or you're going to see 
um, this thing right here, right? So I think uh, you, uh, most most of you are going to see this thing. Uh, but if you're seeing that, what you're going to do is that I'm just going to remove this. Just ignore by the, what I'm doing, by the way. You just have to click this button right here. This is the filters button. And then you go, you're going to go to level. And once you're in the level, you're just going to select I'm just going to select minimal default and just double click that and it's going to take you to that level. Now, what exactly did we do? We used the content browser, right? This is called the content browser. It's uh, you, you can sort of think, uh, think of it as uh, like the file explorer in Windows. Uh, you basically have all your folders and all your assets in one place and you can just use any of them. You can just drag anything in your viewport. Speaking of the viewport, this is our viewport and we're going to be moving in it. We're going to be uh, creating our whole scene in it and yeah that's so that's that and this however is the outliner uh, you're not going to have this viewport i think so i'm just going to delete that anyway so you this is the outliner you can see all uh, the assets which are currently inside of our scene right here so for example if i just click this chair here if i click this chair you're going to see that this chair is going to be selected right and you can just click anything and that's going to be selected similarly if i select this chair in in this outliner it's going to select that in our viewport and when I select that, you're going to see that in the details panel, this is called the details panel. You're going to see everything which is important about the chair, right? We can make changes to the chair. We can uh, change certain properties of the chair, but don't worry about this. Uh, most of these, these settings we're never going to touch. Uh, we're just going to be uh, dealing with a few very important ones, which I'm going to get into in just a bit, right? So basically, you're going to see all these static meshes. So basically, in the static meshes folder, you're going to see everything which is um, in our scene currently, which we can see. However, you're also going to see all these, all this stuff as well. Now, what exactly is this? So basically, these are the volumetric clouds. If I just look up, obviously, you don't know how to look up right now. Uh, but what I'm just doing is that I'm holding the right mouse button. I'm clicking the right mouse, right mouse button, and then I'm moving my mouse to sort of look around. And if I just look up, you're going to see that if I select the volumetric clouds and if I click this I button right here, you're going to see that it's going to go away. So basically, they, they were the clouds, right? Then we have this SM Sky Sphere. If I look around, you're going to see that nothing seems to be selected at the moment. But if I turn it off, you're going to see that nothing is really happening because of the fact that uh, this basically um, SM Sky Sphere is not really being used at the moment. Uh, if I just go down, you're going to see that nothing really happens because this Sky Sphere is essentially useless for now. Also, don't worry about uh, how to move. Uh, I'm just going to show you that in just a bit, right? So next, if I go to skylight, if I turn this off, you're going to see that everything, all the shadows are going to become much darker, right? If I turn this on, you're going to see that the shadows are going to become much more realistic. Now, what exactly does the skylight do? The skylight basically um, makes sure that the sky is emitting light. I, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it, it is exactly as the name suggests. Basically, what happens is that if I click this thing right here, this is called the light source. It's called the directional light. It is, it's basically the sun, right? If I look up and you're going to see that's the sun right there. If I turn this off, you're going to see that that's going to go away. And with that, it's going to take all, all the light away from us because obviously the sun was the thing which was lighting our whole scene, right? Um, and if I turn the skylight off, you're going to see that now only the sun is basically, uh, basically the sun is the only light source in our scene, right? And everything else, the whole sky is not emitting any sort of light. So you're always going to want to have a skylight in your scene. Um, and by the way, if you're adding a skylight, make sure to go into the details panel and make sure to turn on real time capture, because this is going to make sure that your skylight is being updated, updated constantly. And it's being um, it, it is giving you the best results. Apart from that, we have the sky atmosphere. If I look at the skyline right there, you're going to see if I turn this off, it's basically going to get rid of that blue atmosphere of the earth. Uh, so that's what it does, basically. Post-process volume, we're going to come back to this later. It is a little complicated. However, uh, basically, this exponential height fog is fog. Well, I mean, it's just fog. Uh, that's how you add fog inside of Unreal Engine 5. But yeah, that's what all of this stuff is doing. This player start and starter background cube, this is basically meant to be um, used if you're playing a game. Also, you can just go into the game mode by pressing this button right here. So if I just press this button and if I click in my viewport, you're going to see that now you're going to play this like a game. So I can just press W on my keyboard to move ahead and S to move back, A to move to the left and D to move to the right. And I can just go wherever I want. Right. So basically, it's like a first person game. And I'm going to press escape to get out of my game. Also, right now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you guys how to move um, in Unreal Engine 5. So basically, you just hold your right mouse button to look around. 
right? And then with your right, right mouse button held, what you're gonna do is that you're gonna press W, A, S, T to move forward and backwards and E to move up and Q to move down. So basically you move in Unreal Engine 5 just the way you would move in a regular FPS game, except for the fact that you can go up and down uh, using the E and Q keys respectively. However, in FPS games, you can't really do that. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And you can even go through objects in this. So basically there are no restrictions in the editor mode. And yeah, so that's basically how you move in Unreal Engine 5. Now, I'm sure this might seem a little uh, weird for you, especially you're, if you're coming from um, a, 3D, a traditional 3D software like Blender. I remember when I first started learning Unreal Engine 5, it was very confusing for me uh, to get used to this uh, controls. And I immediately searched for a way to <laughs> change these controls to uh, Blender controls, which are holding the Alt um, Alt keyboard, Alt on my keyboard, and then using the mouse to move. But what happened was that firstly, I wasn't able to find any um, proper technique of doing that. And secondly, within like a day or two, within I think a few days, I basically got used to um, this movement of method, this method of movement. And I actually, I started to prefer this because in Unreal Engine 5, generally your maps are very big, right? And there's no one central pivot point around which you want to move. Speaking of that, you can also do that in Unreal Engine 5. However, it's not that good. You can just hold your Alt uh, on your keyboard and then you can use your left mouse button. Just click that and move around. But now you're going to see that your pivot point is not this, right? You would you would expect that your pivot point would be this. However, it's not. It's just this random point in the air around which you're moving. So I would not recommend you to use that tool. Uh, I would actually recommend you to just use the WASD keys, right? Now, for example, um, now right now our camera speed is very fast. For example, if I just want to place my camera right in front of this, right? I can't really do that because our camera speed is very fast, right? How do we how do we um, decrease our camera speed? You basically go up to this thing right here, this camera right here, this camera icon, which says four right next to it. And then you just decrease that to something like two. And that's going to essentially cut your speed by half. And now you're going to see we can make precise movements, right? You can even bring it down to one. And what if you want to, for example, increase your speed by quite a lot, you can just simply increase the camera speed back up and you can maybe increase it to eight. And then you're going to see it's going to be very fast. Now, usually in Unreal Engine 5, if you're creating like a really big landscape, this is not going to be enough. Camera speed 8 is not going to be enough. So for that, if you want to go above this, you're just going to simply increase this camera speed scaler. So for example, if I increase this to 2, you're going to see that it's going to essentially give us twice the speed of uh, like the regular 8 uh, camera speed, right? So I'm just going to change this back to 1 because this is insane. And I think 3 should be fine. But let me just first increase the camera speed and go closer to my scene and then I'm gonna so change this back to something like three I think should be good yeah so I think that's fine right so that's how you move inside of Unreal Engine 5 uh, now I'm going to show you some controls which you can use to sort of manipulate and modify the meshes which you have so basically you select a mesh uh, also these are called meshes right if you're not familiar with the concept of meshes anything which is uh, which you can see inside of your scene uh, is a mesh for example these these blocks are meshes uh, the stable is a mesh. Anything which you see on your screen right now is a mesh, right? Except for obviously the clouds and everything like that. They are volumes, right? So what, what we're going to be doing is that we, I'm just going to be selecting this um, chair right here. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, what if I, for example, want to rotate this chair? I'm just going to click right here. This is the rotate option. And with that selected, you can see that we have the three axes in front of us. So I can just use the Z axis to rotate it like that. And I can just rotate it however I want. Obviously, I can rotate it in the other directions as well, but that doesn't really make sense. But yeah, that's how you rotate. For example, if I want to move this chair, you simply just click this move button right here. And then you can just select whichever axis you want to move it in. And then you can move it in that axis, right? I can even move it in the Z axis. But that, again, doesn't make sense. But what if you want to move your object in two directions, two um, axes simultaneously? You just simply have to, uh, if I just go closer to this, you can see that we have these this uh, square in the middle. And if I select that square, if I click that square, you're going to see that both the uh, the Y axis and the X axis are going to become uh, yellow. And I can just select that and I can move it in those two axes simultaneously. Similarly, if I just do, uh, if I just select any two um, axes, I can just move between those uh, axes simultaneously, right? So that's how you do that. I can even go here and select the X and the Z axis and do that as well. Right, so basically the red axis, by the way, is called the X axis. Uh, the Y axis is called, uh, basically the green axis is called the Y axis and the blue is called the Z axis.
So I want you to guys, I want you guys to remember this because we might need to use this information later on, right? So that's how you basically rotate and move inside of Unreal Engine 5. Now, how do you scale? Uh, you basically select the scale tool. Obviously, you select anything. And then I would actually recommend you to scale this uniformly. Uh, so basically, the way you scale this uniformly is by selecting that white uh, white cube in the middle. And if you select that, you're going to see all the axes are going to become um, yellow. And if I just scale it up, if I just select that and bring it up, you're going to see that it's going to scale it up like that. <laughs> and that's huge. However, if you want to scale it in one specific direction, however, that is highly not recommended. Uh, but you can select any axis and you can scale it up. The reason why it's not recommended is the fact that is because of the fact that it sort of um, messes up the uh, the aspect ratio of the textures and everything of the mesh as well. Right, so you're going to see this looks very weird. I mean, it does make sense. But yeah, you can do that if you want. <laughs> you can create a, a giant sofa if you want. Right. Uh, and yeah, that's basically how you um, move things, how you rotate things and how you scale things in Unreal Legend 5. Now, one thing which you might be noticing is the fact that if I just go to the top and if I, um, for example, look at the uh, look at the, the sofa from the top, I'm just going to undo it because the scale is looking pretty funny. Anyways, so what if, what if I want to move this exactly ahead of it? For example, if I select these two axes and you're going to see that we can't really move it directly ahead, right? You have to sort of snap through uh, uh, different axes and stuff like that. How exactly do we change this sort of pivot point to be pointing in, in front of the chair? I hope that makes sense. The way you do that is by clicking this icon right here, which says, which is currently in the world mode. If I dislike that, you're going to see now it's going to go to object mode. And then you're going to notice that uh, the axis is not in line with the world axis. So the world axis is basically this grid right here. You're going to see that this grid is, um, this axis is not, not aligned with the grid anymore. It's aligned with the actual object itself, right? So you, now you can just move it ahead or back just like you would, right? So that's basically it. And uh, you can just go back to the world mode. And usually we would like to um, switch between the two. There's no standard mode of moving things. Uh, you can just use whichever one you think is better for that specific situation. Speaking of snapping, basically you're going to see that right now snapping is turned on, right? We are basically snapping between um, things, between units, and we can't really precisely move anything. But what if you want to precisely move a specific object? You basically come to these tools right here, these three tools right here, and these are basically the snapping tools. So for example, if I want to move this and I want to turn off snapping, I'm just going to click this blue button right here, this grid button right here. If I click that, now you're going to see that snapping is turned off and now I can move this uniformly, uh, precisely, right? And I'm just going to turn that on. What if I want to rotate it? And right now you're going to see that rotation snapping is turned on. If I turn that off, you're going to see that now you can move this precisely. And uh, for scaling, I'm just going to turn snapping off. And now you're going to see that we can scale it up however much we want. Right. So that's how you turn on and off snapping. I would generally recommend you to turn it on most of the time. But however, if you want to make like some specific adjustments, then I would recommend you to actually turn it off. But yeah, that's basically how you do that inside of Unreal Engine 5. Right. So next up, we're going to be covering uh, the viewport options. So basically, you have a few viewport options right here. If I just go to this lit mode right here, you're going to see right now, we are in the lit mode, which is using the lumen lighting system. If I go to unlit mode, you're going to see that we don't have suddenly all the lighting has disappeared and our scene looks 10 times worse. <laughs> That's because uh, obviously the right lighting is not working, right? It's unlit. This is very useful, especially if, for example, you have a really dark scene and you want to play some items, for example. And if you just go to the lit mode and let's say your light source is missing and you have a really dark scene, right? For whatever reason. And you have like very few uh, lighting sources. Uh, but what are you going to do in that? You simply have to go to unlit mode and then you can just simply look at your scene normally and then you can just place your items and do whatever you want. And then you can go back to lit mode and then look at your scene using that. Right. So that's one uh, potential use of that. And secondly, you have a wireframe view. This basically shows you the wireframe of your objects. I honestly have never used this mode and I don't think it's that useful. Obviously, if you have created your own model and you want to see if the UVs are right and everything like that, so then you might want to use this. However, for me, at least it's not that useful. Um, and then we have detail lighting. This is just going to show you the lighting. Uh, this is good if you want to, uh, if I'm usually posting my renders to Instagram, I just like to do like a detail shot, uh, detail lighting shot. And then you're going to see lighting only. This is going to show you the lighting only. And reflections, this is basically going to show you the reflections if all the items in your scene were, for example, uh, completely, what do you call it? Completely shiny, right? One thing which you might be noticing right now is your reflections might not be looking as good as mine. 
And the reason for that is because my scalability settings are set to cinematic. If I set them back to epic, you're going to see that everything, especially the glass, is going to look slightly worse. And if I, you're going to see that the uh, the reflection in the floor, for example, are not going to look that good. And if I just basically, basically, this is using screen space reflections. So what that means is that uh, on the floor, I'm seeing the reflection of the table, right? But if I move down, as soon as my table gets out of my screen, what happens is that the reflections are no longer properly calculated and it looks very bad, right? And this is even worse if you don't have ray tracing turned on. And the way you turn it on is by simply going to edit uh, and then project settings. And then you're just going to search for ray tracing. And then use hardware, hardware ray tracing when available. Just turn that on. Make sure that support hardware ray tracing is turned on. And now you're going to see that our reflections are going to look slightly better. If I turn it off, you're going to see that this is going to look much worse. But if I turn it on, it's going to look slightly better. So there's that. And uh, if you can afford to do this, if you have, if you can afford uh, the performance cost of this, because the performance is going to be degraded slightly, you can just we can sort of visualize that using FPS. And so I'm just going to click this these three lines right here, and I'm going to click Show FPS. Right now, you're going to see that we're getting 70 FPS. If I turn ray tracing off, you're going to see then. Actually, we're getting less FPS if we turn it off, but I don't know why that is. But usually what happens is that in, especially in complex scenes, what happens is that uh, when you have like ray tracing turned on, it's going to have a performance cost on your PC, right? So you can have ray tracing, ray traced shadows and ray traced skylight as well for better um for better um, performance, right? And I'm gonna see our shadows and reflections are looking much better. Another thing which you can do to sort of improve your reflections, especially in the glass, uh, because right now you can see that, that the glass is looking pretty bad, is by going to scalability cinematic mode. The way you do that is by going to settings, and then you're gonna go down to engine scalability settings, and then make sure to click cinematic. Now you're gonna see that your reflections are looking much more realistic. Now this is especially useful if you're rendering cars and uh, the mirrors of the, the windshield of the car and the side mirrors and stuff like that, they look very bad by default. And if you turn on the scalability cinematic mode, then they look much, much better, right? Then you have this clear collision mode. This is especially useful if you are making a game and you wanna create collisions and stuff like that, but we're not gonna be covering that in um, our course and then you have this visib visibility collision mode I'm not entirely sure what this does <laughs> but yeah then you have this path tracing mode now this is a very important thing what path tracing is is that by default we're using ray tracing right if you had ray tracing turned off I think we were using rasterization however uh, with path tracing this is a completely different way of rendering and oftentimes it's much much more realistic if I just go back to my lit mode you're going to see that that previous mode was looking much more realistic yeah, so you're going to see that our shadows are basically messed up. And the reason for that, I did some uh, research on this and I found out that basically if I just go to project settings, turning on ray tracing shadows, ray traced shadows was actually not good in this scene. However, in other scenes, I, I've noticed that it works fine, but I think it's a, it's a glitch or something like that. So I'm just going to recommend you to turn this off and the ray trace skylight off as well. And they don't really make a difference in, uh, they don't really make that much of a difference in quality either. Main thing is this uh, support uh hardware ray tracing and use detailed ray tracing when available just use these two options and these are also going to make difference if you are uh in a very re re reflective scene if your scene is very uh has a lot of uh, shiny materials or it has like some a lot of like indirect lighting and we're going to focus on that later on so next up we're going to be focusing on how to use this content browser and what exactly is this for and how to import models how to um, sort of create things in Unreal Engine 5 and how to just add uh, your models in Unreal Engine 5, right? So I'm just going to clear this filter. We had uh, set this filter previously, but I'm just going to right-click this and I'm going to click remove all filters or remove, uh, doesn't really matter that much because we just had one filter. Yeah, so basically you're going to see that this folder, uh, this um, sort of like this folder, this folder hierarchy is actually present in our actual file explorer as well in basically the project folder. And you can just right-click this and then you can click um, show in Explorer and then you're going to see that it's going to open the, what do you call it? um the project folder for us if i just reduce the size of this yeah so you're going to see basically if i just go to my unreal projects you're going to see this unreal 5 basics unreal engine basics and then we have essentially all these um project files which are present here so this content folder whatever you put in this content folder is going to show up here yeah right so basically you're going to see that we have this uh, content folder inside of which we have the starter content and here's the starter content you're not going to see these obviously developers and collections folder because these are i think they're uh, they're reserved for the root folder anyway so 
you, you're going to see all your assets inside of this. So for example, if I want to add like a model, uh, if I want to import a model in Unreal Engine 5, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be dragging that model inside of this folder, or I can just simply drag it inside of this content browser, right? So I'm just going to show you an example. I'm just going to show you a quick example of how to download a model from the internet and add it in your scene. Yeah, right. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to search for, um, what should we search for? So let's import a simple um, chair model. So I'm just going to search for chair 3D model. And basically, if I just go to Sketchfab, Sketchfab is basically the website which I use for pretty much all of my models, for downloading most of my models. And so I think something like this should be good. Old Soviet chair, I think let's download that. Or maybe we can, um, I think I'm going to download this. So I'm just going to open that in, in a new tab. And let's see if, it, if we can find something better. So basically in Sketchfab, the items, the models which have this download sign next to them, uh, on top of them, that basically indicates that they are free to download. Uh, however, if it has this dollar sign next to it, then that means they are available on the store, which means you can buy them. And if it doesn't have anything, for example, um, let me show you an example. For example, this thing right here, this has no symbol at the top. That means it's just to uh, show you guys this model and make you jealous <laughs> because you can't really download this. Uh, there's no way to actually download it unless you can contact the creator and stuff like that. But yeah, this is basically the chair. I'm just going to inspect it to see if the materials are fine and everything like that. I think we're good to go with this chair. So let's just download this. I'm just going to click download 3D model. And then you're going to see that we have a dot blend file, which is good for us because we know how to use Blender. And if we, even if you don't know how to use Blender, I'm going to show you how to um, sort of use it to the extent of like importing models and exporting them for Unreal Engine 5. But yeah, I'm just going to download the dot blend format. And I would actually recommend you to not open any sort of models directly in Unreal Engine 5. I would recommend you to actually run them through uh, a traditional 3D software. So I would recommend you to download Blender 3D. So you can just go to the internet and search for Blender 3D and Blender.org. Just go to this website and click download. So you can just press this download button right here. And then you can just download Blender 3.5.1. Obviously, the version might be different depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but yeah, you just have to download and install it. I'm sure you can do that on your own. So basically, once you have Blender installed, you can just open it. And then we're going to be importing uh, the dot blend format, right? So we can just open the zip file, which has this um, model in it, in, in it. So basically, you're going to see two textures, uh, two folders. The first one is going to be the textures. And so you're going to see that all the textures are going to be present in this folder. Um, yeah, so basically, this is the ambient occlusion texture. This is the base color texture. And I'm going to be showing you how to apply all of these inside of Unreal Engine 5. Don't worry about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to go to source. And the, then we have another zip file. <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyways, we have all these uh, materials in this folder as well. Yeah, so I'm just going to be selecting all of them. And then I'm going to go to my desktop. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this chair 3D model. It's always good to keep your files organized. I actually would recommend you to sort of create a folder which is uh, which has all of your, um, what do you call it, which has all of your uh, models in it. And I actually do have my own folder as well. So I'm just going to be dragging all these models in this folder. While this copies, let me show you my own folder, which is which has all the models which I use. So basically, in my Unreal Engine 5 work folder, I have this assets folder, and then I have this models folder, which has all uh, the models which I uh, usually import in Unreal Engine 5, right? So let's open this Jerry 3D model uh, folder. And then you're going to see that we have this dot blend format. You, we don't really need to sort of um, import this in Blender. We can just open this by double clicking it and it's going to open a brand new Blender file, a Blender window. And I'm just going to ignore this. And I'm just going to close the actual Blender window, which we opened. And now you're going to see that we have that um, model imported. Now, basically, the way Blender works is that you simply select your object, you hold Alt on your keyboard, and you press the middle mouse button first to make that the center point of your rotation. And then you hold Alt on your keyboard again, and then you can just move using the left mouse button, just press that and move your mouse to move uh, to orbit your camera around that uh, pivot point, right? So basically, we want to make sure we want to do two things in this. Firstly, we want to make sure that the normals are fine. Uh, the normals are in the correct uh, direction. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly inside of Unreal Engine 5. And the second thing which we're going to do is that we're going to be importing it as an F as an FPX, and then we're going to be opening it inside of uh, Unreal Engine 5, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click this arrow right here. Now, this tutorial is not mainly focused on Blender 3D, so I'm not going to be going into too much detail. However, you just click this button right here and click face orientation. 
now it, your uh, model is either going to turn blue or it's going to turn red right so for us it's completely blue which is perfectly fine now let's assume that your model or at least some part of your model was red uh, so just ignore what i'm doing and let's assume that your model was like this just ignore what i'm doing by the way let's say your model was like this it was all red what you want to do is you want to select your model with your model selected or if your model has multiple pieces just press a to select everything uh basically all your the whole model is going to be selected then and then you can just go to uh, press tab to go inside of edit mode and if you don't if you can't press tab for whatever reason you can click object mode and then go down to edit mode and after that you're going to go uh, you're going to make sure that everything is selected again you can either select all of these pieces one by one or you can simply press a to select everything and then go to mesh go down to normals and then flip now basically what this is going to do is that this is going to flip all the model uh, all the normals and it's going to make the it make this ready for um uh, make this ready to be exported right so i just uh, pressed tab once again to get out of edit mode but yeah what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to go to file export and then fpx now make sure to export it as fpx because generally in Android engine 5 fpx models work the best right and then i'm going to be going inside my chair 3d model and i'm going to be saving at soviet uh, saving, saving it as soviet chair dot fpx uh, now in this you want to make sure that uh, the settings are basically the default settings are fine. The, the only thing which I'm going to change right now is that I'm going to go down to geometry and smoothing. I'm going to set this to face. Now, this is this is just going to make sure that uh, the uh, the shading of our object is a little better. So it's just going to make your scene look a little better, but nothing major. Right. So then I'm going to click export FPX. And now it's going to be exported as an FPX. So if I just go to my chair 3D model folder, you're going to see that we have this FPX uh, model right here. Now this model, I can just simply drag this inside of Unreal Engine 5 and I can just drag it right here. Just drag it right here and then you can press import all. But I'm not going to do that uh, for now because I'm going to first um, I'm going to first create a folder. Uh, I'm going to right click this content folder and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this chair model and I'm going to be dragging the uh, the chair model inside of this folder because I think it's generally better to just keep things organized and reduce the size of this and then i'm going to be dragging this so we chair inside of our um unreal engine 5 right so you want to make sure that it is not set to skeletal mesh because if it is it's gonna it might it might mess up things we're not going to be covering skeletal meshes for now uh but yeah make sure create new materials is selected and then press import all and so now you're going to see that our chair is inside of our scene so i'm just going to be dragging this inside of our viewport like that and it's as simple as that. You basically have a, a brand new chair, brand new chair 3D model inside of your scene. So I'm just going to be making sure that this is placed correctly. So I'm just going to move it up slightly. And I'm going to have to turn off snapping because we want to make some precise movements, adjustments. So I'm just going to placing, I'm just going to be placing it right there. Now, if you want to make sure that you are placing something correctly, what you want to do is you want to simply click this perspective button right here. And then you can go to either of these viewports, basically any of these viewports. So for example, if I go to the left viewport, it's going to show the whole scene from the left perspective. So I can just zoom in and then I can eyeball this to make sure that it is perfectly aligned with the floor. And obviously you can use these other other options as well. Uh, that for example, the top view, the front view and stuff like that. But that's not really helpful for us right now. Anyway, so that's fine. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be scaling this up slightly. So I'm just going to scale it up like that. I think that should be good. Now, the main problem which you might be noticing, but before that, let me just save everything. Just press save all. And then once everything is saved, press control S as well, because those two work differently in Unreal Engine 5. I know it's weird, but yeah, that's how it works. Anyway, so one thing which you might be noticing right now is the fact that this uh, this object has no uh, materials on it uh, right now. Because if I just go back to Blender, you're going to see if I just go to my material preview mode, you're going to see that there were no materials assigned to this object, right? So how do we import our materials inside of Unreal Engine 5? Now, basically, there are two main methods. The first method is to be is if you want to import the exact same textures as this uh, model. And you can do that by simply just going to Unreal Engine 5, right clicking, and then creating a new material, create basic asset and go down to material. And this is how you create materials inside of Unreal Engine 5. But there is a much simpler way of doing this as well. I'm, I'm going to be showing you that in just a bit. Yeah, so basically, once you have this material created, I'm just going to be double clicking it to open it. And now you're going to see this um, material editor open. 
Um, don't be confused. This is very confusing to beginners, unfortunately. However, uh, once you get familiar with Unreal Engine 5 within a few days, I think it's going to be perfectly fine and you're going to be very comfortable with this, right? So what we're going to be doing is in this is that we're going to be creating our own, our own material using the textures that we got with our model. So what I'm going to do with that for that is that I'm going to be going to my folder, going back to my folder, and I'm going to be selecting all the asset, all the uh, textures which we got with the material. And I'm going to be dragging all those inside of the folder, this folder, which we in which we imported our chair, right? So you're going to see that all the textures are in our scene. And even if you don't understand this fully, don't worry about that, because eventually you will get very used to this and you will um, sort of get very used to this and basically you will think that this is very easy in just a bit so firstly i'm going to be importing the base color so i'm just going to be dragging this inside of the material editor just drag that in and then we're going to be importing this we're going to be inputting this in you guessed it the base color right and now you're going to see that the base color is going to uh, appear on top of this sphere you can just move this sphere using the left mouse button and then moving your mouse and then we're going to be importing the normal and in the normal i'm just going to be dragging this inside of well, the normal, and then the roughness inside of the roughness, and then the ambient occlusion, the AO, it's basically ambient occlusion. I'm going to be dragging that inside of the ambient occlusion. So now our material is essentially created, and I'm just going to press apply on my keyboard or on this button, and then I'm going to be dragging this material on top of this chair. So you're going to see that this chair looks perfectly fine, right? Yeah. That looks perfectly fine. However, the problem with this is the fact that the roughness map is sort of inverted. Because in this, if I just go back to Sketch 5, you're going to see that most of the chair was rough, but some of it was a little more shiny, right? However, in our scene, what's happening is that just some of the chair is not um, shiny and everything else is shiny. That's not something which we want. So basically, we want, what we want to do is that we want to uh, sort of basically invert uh, the roughness node. Right, so now we can just go ahead and invert this node and the way we do that you can also cl close this by the way just to see just to get some more space and you can even make this smaller but i think we need to keep it at least this size because we want to see this uh material as well right so the way we invert anything in unreal engine 5 in uh, in the materials of unreal engine 5 you, you just right click and then you just search for one minus so basically this is a one minus node which is going to be uh sort of inverting this texture and what we're going to be doing is that instead of plugging this directly in the roughness channel i'm just going to be plugging this inside this node and then i'm going to be plugging this node inside the roughness so this is essentially going to invert it and now you're going to see our uh, material is mostly rough and now you're going to see that if i uh open my viewport you're going to see that it is looking pretty good yeah so it's basically looking very realistic and i think we are pretty much good to go right so that's how you essentially import uh materials inside of uh, of unreal engine 5 but this method is basically the last resort also by the way just save everything this method is the last resort usually you don't want to do this usually what you want to do is that you want to um, apply a material which is already inside of unreal engine 5 which is an unreal engine 5 material usually those materials look much better uh so for that i'm just going to be going to starter content and you are going to find a few materials inside of Unreal Engine 5 just by default. Uh, if you have starter content enabled, by the way. Um, or you can just go ahead and download other materials, which we're going to be doing in just a bit. But yeah, you can just go down to materials. And then you can essentially just scroll through these. And or you can simply just search for wood. And yeah, you're going to see that we have these wood materials. I'm just going to be applying this wood wallet material to this. So basically, this material, I think, looks pretty decent. And I think, uh, actually, I think the previous one was better, if I'm being honest, maybe this one. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So basically, you can just choose any of these materials. Uh, but what if you don't like any material and you don't want to create your own material either? You want to have like a custom material, uh, a custom pre-made material. Well, you are in luck because Unreal Engine 5 actually does have uh, a really good library, a material library uh, called Megascans. So basically, what you're going to do is that you're going to go to add. Then we're going to go to add Quixel content. And then it's going to be opening a new window, which is called the Quixels Megascan, uh, Megascans library. So basically, this is the Quixel Bridge app, which is used to import Quixel Megascans assets. I think this is going to ask you to uh, log into your Epic Games account to so just do that. Um, and now you're going to see that we have all sorts of models. Yeah, you're going to see that it's asking me to log in. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Right. So once we're logged in, you're going to see that we have all sorts of different uh, models and materials right so what i'm going to do is simply uh, you basically have two options the first option is you just simply go ahead and search for wood 
you can essentially find pretty much any sort of material here. Uh, and you're going to see that we have 3D assets and then we have surfaces. I'm not going to cover decals right now. We're going to be going to that later on. Uh, but for now, just uh, open surfaces. And now you're going to see that we have different sorts of wood materials because obviously there's not, uh, there are many types of woods, right? So basically we have regular wood, we have uh, bark, we have some uh, historical wood and stuff like that, right? So I'm just going to be going to the regular wood. And then we have some categories in this as well. So you can just choose whichever one you want. I think something like maybe this uh, worn wooden planks might be good. So I'm just going to download that. Once you basically you just have to click this download button and the quality, I would recommend you to actually keep it at medium because high quality, if you, if you go to high quality, then it's going to be more, um, uh, it's going to be more costly on your computer and it's going to reduce performance uh, by quite a lot. So I would recommend you to just stay at medium unless you want some really close up shots, then I would recommend you to go um, to high or maybe highest. Right. So once you download it, you're going to see this option to add it. You're just going to, you're just going to be pressing it twice. And once you press it twice, it's just going to open that, uh, open that folder. Right. So the first time, basically when you uh, click this first time, it's going to import it, but it's not going to sort of take you to that folder. Right. But if you press it twice, it's going to take you to that folder as well. So now we can just go ahead and apply this material to this um, chair. And just like that, you're going to see that this chair is going to have the material. And these materials, by the way, are fully customizable. So I'm just going to be minimizing this. And so the way you minimize these materials is by simply double clicking this once. And then you're going to see that we have all sorts of options right here in the details panel, right? Uh, so you can firstly, you can change the tiling of this material. So if you think that this is uh, too large and you want to reduce the scale of this material. So basically what you're going to do is that you're going to be increasing the tiling. So the higher the number of the styling is, basically the more time it's going to tile and therefore the smaller your texture is going to appear, right? So if I just increase this to two and obviously increase the Y by the same amount, now you're going to see that the material is going to become half as big, right? It's going to become twice as twice smaller, right? If that makes sense. And then you can even offset it as well. So this makes sense. I mean, you can just move the texture around to see which position looks better. And apart from that, we have rotation angle option as well. So you're going to see that we have uh, we can rotate this material however we want. Uh, I'm in a cruising strength. You, I, I usually don't uh, like bother with this as much because I think this doesn't really make that big of a difference. And then we're going to go down to albedo tint. If you just turn this on and if you open this, uh, basically you're going to see that we have RGB values, which we can use to sort of change the color of this texture. But I'm going to collapse. I'm going to collapse this and we're going to be using this uh, color picker to sort of um, change the color of this. So you can just make this whatever you want. And obviously just don't go too extreme. Otherwise it's going to look very weird. For example, this just doesn't look realistic, but yeah, I'm just going to cancel this out. You have a lot of um, flexibility. If for example, you want to make uh, this material a little darker, then you can just reduce the value of this and something like that. Yeah. So basically you have all sorts of options and in, in many cases it's very uh, useful. Next up, we have albedo controls. If for example, you want to increase the saturation of this material by a little bit, then you can do that. If you want to reduce or increase the brightness, uh, yeah, and then we have contrast options as well. So basically any sort of options which you want, you will find them here. And I think these are really good materials which we can use uh, quite easily in our in our scenes. And metal controls, we're not going to be bothering with this because this is not a metal, obviously. You can find metal object, metal materials in mega scans as well. And the base specular, basically this sort of controls how reflective your um, object is. So if I reduce it to zero, don't go into negative values, by the way. That's generally not recommended. Let me reduce this camera speed a little bit. Yeah, so I'm just going to clo go close to it. You're going to see that basically, if I set this to zero, which it is, you're going to see that there are pretty much no reflections. But if I set this to one, you're going to see that it's going to be quite reflective. Right. So generally, I would recommend you to stay close to 0 0.5. And how do we control like the actual re actual reflections? The way we do that is by changing uh, the roughness. So the max roughness and the min roughness. So basically, if you decrease the max, max roughness, you're going to see that if I just set it to something like 0 0.2, you're going to see that the reflections are going to be pretty visible, right? They're pretty good, right? And if you increase the min roughness, it's going to sort of decrease the roughness. Uh, however, in some other parts of the material, if that makes sense. And if you don't understand what I mean by this, basically, it's not it's not a big deal. You'll understand as you go. But yeah, just just it's just a little different than just um sort of increasing this because different parts are control different parts of this material are controlled by different um values, right? So basically, um, if that didn't make sense at all, don't worry about that because it doesn't really matter that much. I think something like zero point six might be good or zero point 
7. I usually just change the max roughness value. I don't really mess with the min roughness most of the time. But yeah, that's how you do that. Next up, moving on to the normal strength. Basically, your normal strength is how um, sort of how rugged your material looks, right? Right now, you're going to see that the bumps and everything is not that visible. But if I increase this normal strength to something like 5, you're going to see that the uh, edges and everything becomes a little more pronounced. So if that's the look you're going for, uh, this effect, I think, is illustrated pretty well in this, uh, in this part of the chair. So you're going to see if I reduce the normal strength to 1, you're going to see it looks pretty flat. But if I increase it to something like 5, you're going to see that it looks extremely um, rough and like very detailed. So generally, I keep it at something like two or three. I think going above two or three makes it look a little more, a little too fake, in my opinion. But yeah, that's the option. And you can also change these uh, material textures as well. So for example, if I just go back to my chair model, and let's say I don't like this color text, uh, this, um, what do you call it? This basically this color of this wood and the texture of this wood, I can just simply drag in my base color right here. And now you're going to see that this is essentially going to take the color of that uh, the original chair which we had previously, right? And so that's what you can do as well. And you can also uh, replace the normal as well. Right? So basically, you have a lot of these options which you can mess around with, but I'm not going to do that for now. Yeah, I think this looks much better. Right? So we're done with this. And so basically, now you know how to sort of edit Megascans materials. And by the way, you can just find uh, any source of materials on mega scans you can simply go to uh this these categories the collections they're called and then you can just go to different sort of collections and maybe you want to go to essentials and then i don't know something like surface so this is just going to give you some basic uh textures basic materials so walls um you have concrete you have asphalt and stuff like that i use this in most of my projects uh and yeah, you have a lot of these different options, right? And you can go to home and then you can go to different categories. For example, if you want to go to surfaces, then you have all these sorts of surfaces. If let's say you want a marble material and then you have some categories in this as well. Yeah, so you can basically just search for any sort of any sort of material and you can add it to your own scene. And yeah, so that's basically how the Quixel Bridge uh, app works. And basically the Quixel Bridge is an app, this app which you can use to import mega scans assets inside of Unreal Engine 5, right? So I'm just going to be closing this and let's save this project and let's move on to the next step, right? So while we're covering materials, basically, I want you guys to, uh, I want to introduce you guys to a texture pack, a material pack, which I use in pretty much all of my projects alongside Megascans, obviously. And that for that, we're going to go, we're going to have to go back to our Epic Games launcher. And so let's go back. I'm just going to wait for this to open, right? So once we're in Unreal Engine, I'm just going to go to Marketplace and just wait for it to open. And here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be searching for automotive. Oops, one second. Automotive materials. The search feature is pretty bad, to be honest, because it searches after every character you type. So you have to wait for it to complete. Anyway, so once you search for automotive, this will come up. Automotive materials. I'm just going to open this. So basically, this is a material pack made by Epic Games themselves. And basically, the way this works is that this is a material pack made for cars. And it has a lot of these metals and a lot of these car paints, uh, stuff like that. But what it also has is that it also has a lot of these leather textures, a lot of wood textures, a lot of metal textures, and like different cloth textures and stuff like that, which we can use in pretty much any sort of uh, scene which we want. I use this for my, you're going to see that we have a lot of these materials, right? Plus it's made by Epic and it's free. So I would recommend you to download this. Basically, you can use this for interiors, um, basically interior designing, like for example, those uh, those architectural visualization scenes, you can use it for those. You can use it for, um, I don't know, making cars, obviously that's what it's for, and making product renders. I basically use this material pack in pretty much all of my renders. So yeah, basically, I'm going to be using this, uh, I'm just going to be uh, letting I would recommend you guys to download this because we're going to be using this pack in uh, future projects as well. Right. So you can just download this once you have downloaded it, I think it's going to ask you to add to project, just add it to your project. And I'm just going to be opening selecting this project. If for example, your project is, does not come up here. So I want you guys to turn on uh, click this button right here, which says which says show all projects, and then it's going to hopefully come up and then just add to project. Right, so I'm just going to wait for it to do that. And so the initial download is, I think, around two gigabytes. So I would recommend you to um, just download that beforehand so that when we're doing the projects, you don't have to wait then. 
right? So basically this is completed and I'm just gonna be minimizing this. If I go back to Unreal Engine, you're gonna see that we have this new folder right here, which says automotive materials. So we can just open this, we can go down to materials and then we can open the exterior folder and the interior folder. And you have basically a lot of these different uh, materials which you can use. So for example, metals, you, have, you can see we have a lot of these metal materials. We also have a lot of lights and stuff like that. We have some, we have glass materials, we have decals and stuff like that. Right, so basically you can, we, we're gonna be using these in our future projects. But yeah, I just, want to, I just wanted to add this part here so that you guys can just download this texture pack beforehand so that we don't have to wait later on, right? And you can also find wood materials and maybe apply it to this as well. And applying materials in Unreal Engine 5 is as simple as just dragging them onto our scene. And I think this looks really good. And also these materials are also customizable. So if I, if you, if you don't like the color of this material, which I don't honestly like, so I'm just gonna double click this and open it. And you're gonna see that these are gonna have uh, pretty much the same uh, material settings as uh, the Megascans materials. However, there are a few more settings in Megascans than there are here, but yeah, most of them are pretty much the same. So basically what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be clicking this use tint button. Let's turn this on, let's turn on the tint, and then you can just bring it a little down something like that and then maybe increase maybe bring it a little towards the orange side to make it a, a little more you know vibrant increase the value slightly i think that should be a good sweet spot so basically this is the before and this is the after so you can essentially essentially play around with this material and you can just do whatever you want with this right so we're done with that i'm just going to close that out and i'll just go ahead and save your project and once we're done with that we're now going to be working on the next part which is going to be lighting so basically so far we've covered how to import models in unreal engine 5 how to create textures how to use pre-made textures because most of the textures which we're going to be using in our scenes are going to be pre-made so we don't need to know too much about how to um, create advanced textures that i think is uh, not a not for beginners i think it's very confusing because of the node setup node system in unreal engine 5 however using pre-made textures is pretty simple and we've done that right so now let's move on to the next step, which is going to be the lighting. So for the lighting, what I'm going to do is that firstly, I'm going to be getting rid of all the lights and everything in our scene so that we can uh, basically work from scratch. And we're going to be creating first, creating this whole setup from scratch, and then we're going to be creating some indoor lighting from scratch. So I'm just going to be selecting this. I'm going to be holding shift and selecting all these. Let's delete them. Press delete on your keyboard. Select all this stuff as well. So basically that stuff we didn't need anyway. So I'm just going to close all this, uh, delete all this. And I'm just going to be dragging the Soviet chair and uh, and basically putting it inside of the static mesh. And yeah, so that's basically uh, our scene. Right now, you're going to see that we have no lighting. If, for example, you want to modify the scene in any way, I would recommend you to just go to your unlit mode. And then you can just place your whole, uh, place all your objects in your unlit mode and then move on to the lighting part. Right. So what I'm going to do is that firstly, I'm going to be creating uh, the basic lighting setup, which we had previously from scratch. So I'm just going to go to window. And inside window, you're gonna see this thing right here, which is called environment light mixer. If I just open that, you're gonna see that it's gonna come up right here. Now, this is basically uh, sort of like, um, now you can think of this as sort of like a, a light creator in Unreal Engine 5. And basically you can just create all these buttons one by one, and it's gonna create everything for us automatically. So you can just create skylight first, atmospheric light, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric clouds, and then create height fog. Now, basically, you're going to see that everything which we had previously was uh, is created. However, again, one problem which you're seeing right now is the fact that the shadows were looking pretty good previously, right? And now they're looking very bad. And if you remember one thing, what I told you was that basically we had a, the skylight on. Um, we had checked a certain setting in skylight, which was giving us those shadows. So I'm just going to do that. So just go to uh, skylight. And then if you go down to real time capture, and if you turn it on, you're going to see that our lighting is going to look pretty good, right? So I think it looks pretty decent. Now, one thing which you might be noticing is the fact that the direction of the sun is different than it was previously. So I think right now the sun is somewhere there behind the clouds. And previously, I think it was somewhere there. Anyway, so how, how exactly do you move the sun? You simply select the direction light. And let's see where it is. Uh, if, you, for, if, for example, you can't find a specific object, uh, object, right now we do know that it's right there. But for example, if you can't find it, you just have to double click it. And then it's going to take you to that specific object. It's going to make that specific object uh, bring that specific object to the center of the screen. Anyway, so now we can just use the rotate tool to simply rotate the sun. If I just rotate this, you're going to see that the light is going to rotate like that. Isn't it cool? 
and that's perfect right you can even just move it to the top or you can just create a sunset scene a sunset scene and it's going to change the lighting uh light color accordingly automatically and that's perfect right one thing which you might be noticing right now is the fact that if i take this uh sun to the edges and if the scene becomes darker you're going to see that the brightness of the screen the exposure of the scene is increasing automatically and if I just bring it to the top, you're going to see that at first it's very bright, but then the exposure automatically adjusts. Now, that is something good when you're just working on a regular scene with in which you don't um, in which you don't want complete control. I think that is fine in that scene. However, if you want complete control over the lighting, I would actually recommend you to turn off auto exposure in this and just use manual exposure. If you um, if you're familiar with maybe photography or videography, you know that exposure using the manual mode in your camera and uh, sort of um, controlling the exposure is very important, right? So what I'm going to do for, do for that is that I'm going to go to add here, by the way, you can basically add any sort of any sort of objects. For example, if you want to add like a cube, then you can just go here and add shapes and then cube. And you can then move this wherever you want and bring it up. And then you can apply textures, textures to this and do whatever you want, essentially. Right. So I'm just going to be deleting this for now. But yeah, what you can add as well is that you can just go to visual effects and then you can add a post process volume. And now if I do that, you're going to see that we have this sort of cube in our scene, which is um, basically which is doing nothing at the point at, at this point. Uh, so basically what this is, is that you can sort of add, add specific effects to this post process volume and they're going to take effect only inside of this volume. So, for example, if I just uh, go inside this post process volume, you're going to see that right now nothing happens. That is because our post process volume does not have any effects right now, right? So if I just bring this here, and if, for example, now what I do is what I do is that I and so for example now if I just go down and I go in the de details panel and let's say I increase I go to the global, so let's say I increase the contrast by I don't know something like eighty percent, one point eight. You're gonna see that right now nothing is happening, but if I go inside my post process volume. As I go inside it, you're going to see that th that effect is going to take place and it's going to be visible to us as long as we're inside this post process volume, right? But if I get out of it, you're going to see that it's going to go back to default. If I go inside it, you're going to see that it's going to, that effect is going to kick in, right? And so basically this is useful for making uh, certain adjustments. For example, the adjustments, uh, the adjustment which we are concerned about right now is if I go to exposure, you're going to see that the metering mode is set to auto exposure histogram. If I set this to manual, now basically we have full control over our exposure but only if we are inside of our um, post process volume right you're going to see that if i go inside this it's, it becomes really dark because our exposure compensation is set to just one if i set this to something like nine i think that should be good now if i get out of this you're going to see that it's going to become auto exposure again and it's going to expose automatically it's going to take some time but it's going to expose automatically but if i go inside this you're going to see that it's going to become it's, it's automatically going to go inside the manual exposure mode Right. So basically, now this is all fine and dandy. However, the problem is how do we add this effect to the whole scene without having to sort of scale up uh, the post process volume and just having uh, just having it um, just be and increasing the size of it to sort of cover the whole scene. How do we do? How do we apply the effect to the whole scene without doing that? You basically simply just go to search and you search for infinite. Basically, you search for infinite extent unbound. If I just turn this on, you're going to see that even if I get out of my exposure, uh, get out of my post process volume, the settings which we set are actually still in effect. If I just increase the contrast, you're going to see that everything is going to be as it is, even when we're outside of the post process volume, right? So I'm just going to reduce the contrast back again. And so what I what I usually like to do is I usually just like to scale this down quite a lot, something like that. Then I just like to move it aside and then just not worry about it at all until I want to sort of change some settings but yeah it's going to affect the whole scene and that's what we were trying to achieve basically what we were trying to achieve is that uh we wanted to set the exposure automatically so i think 9.5 exposure compensation should be the sweet spot and now you're going to see that if i change my directional light if i rotate my directional light and give it a sunset look you're going to see that the exposure is going to stay the same so that's just it just gives you some extra control over what you can do in your scene I think something like that might be a good exposure value.
Perfect. Right. So we're done with that. Right. So next up, we're going to be working on adding custom lights, right? Because obviously we won't always want um, an outdoor lighting setup, right? We have to light indoor scenes as well and stuff like that. So for that, what I'm going to do is that first thing I'm just going to be creating um, some walls around this. You basically have two options. Either you can just create some walls around this. You can basically just um, hold alt on your keyboard and uh, basically just select any object, hold alt on your keyboard and then move it with alt pressed. And that's sort of going to uh, create a copy of it. It's going to duplicate it. You're going to see we have floor and then floor two, which is the copy. And then you can just rotate it like this to create a wall. So basically, that's your first option. Another option which you have to practice your lighting is basically to sort of um, go down into, into the content browser. And then you can just search, uh, open this filters option. And then you can go to level. And then you're going to have this level right here starter map. So if you open this level and just save selected, you're going to see that we have this whole setup, this whole um, scene, which has quite a lot of materials and stuff like that for you to like play around with and just practice some stuff with. Right. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting this uh, fire thing right here. And I'm going to be deleting it in this as well, because we don't really want that right now. And the good thing about this is that we can sort of experiment with the class as well. And then we have some other uh, walls and stuff like that pre-made so that we can test our materials and lighting and stuff like that. So I'm just going to be using this. Plus, we also have a window as well. So we can use that as well. Right. So firstly, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be deleting everything which we don't want. So audio, we don't want that. Audio is mainly useful for what do you call it for games and stuff like that, because but we since we're not really using any since we're not creating games uh, in this course, we're not going to be needing that. And we are going to need those lighting effects. Uh, yeah, so basically this light is going to go and all the lights are going to go. And let's just close all this. Let's just close this folder, physics actors. So basically what this is, you might be wondering what these are, reflect, space, sphere reflection captures. Now, basically in Unreal Engine 4, the way reflections worked was basically by adding these um, sphere reflection captures, right? However, in Unreal Engine 5, they've basically introduced that lumen lighting setup and now you don't really need them. So we're just going to be getting rid of them. You can still use them, but they're not necessary because of the new lumen lighting setup. It's very... Um, it's basically a dynamic lighting system which works automatically and these text labels I might actually delete them because just to make our scene a little more simple and instance foliage actor uh, I'm just going to delete that as well we are going to cover foliage later on but yeah for now let me just get rid of all these empty folders let's collapse everything actually let's delete all the lights as well so that we start working on the lighting by ourselves Right, so our lighting is gone. Now, firstly, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be adding a light. So basically, you just go to add and then you go to lights and then you have a few options for the lights, right? Now, this is the directional light, which we just used. This is basically the sunlight. If I add it, you're going to see that we have the sunlight. Uh, obviously, we don't have the atmosphere and everything. So that's why it looks weird. However, the sunlight is right there for you. And then we have a point light. So basically, the point light is, I mean, if you know any traditional 3D software, then you would know that a point light is just a point light. It's just a, uh, it's sort of a sphere which is emitting light and you can use it to, uh, you can use it mainly to just uh, fill in scenes with some light. I would not recommend you to actually use this as your primary light source. And I'm going to be showing you, uh, I'm going to be telling you the reason in just a bit. But if I just go ahead and add uh, light and then if I add a rec light, I'm going to be covering the spotlight in just a bit. But let me show you an example. Firstly, uh, I'm just going to be importing a rec light as so basically this rec light is the light which we're primarily going to use. And the reason for this is because if I just turn off my point light and if I place my rec light somewhere there and if I rotate it, because obviously it's pointing to the other direction, if I place it like that, you're going to notice one thing, and that is that the shadows of these objects are very smooth. Right, the shadows are very smooth and the whole scene is looking a little uh, obviously it is a little overexposed because we don't have our post process volume in however the scene is looking good right now if i just replace this with the point light you're going to notice one thing if i add the point light instead you're going to see let me just place it at the same position so you can have a direct comparison so basically you can see the shadows are very sharp right and basically everything looks a little more hard like the lighting looks a little harder and that's basically because of the fact that um, and that's how physics works in real life as well. Basically, the smaller your light source is, the sharper and the longer your shadows are going to be. Uh, but be uh, and because this is a point light, the 
basically the light source is very small uh, it's just a point and in this you basically and the rect light you have this sort of uh, box right this sort of um, rectangle which is emitting light right and you can even control the size and stuff uh, size and uh, the width and height of this by simply going by simply first selecting the rect light and then going down into the details panel and then you can just increase the width you can see that the width is increasing and then you can also increase the height as well and you're going to notice that up to a certain point if we uh if i decrease it like that you're going to see that the shadows become sharper but if i keep increasing it you i want you guys to sort of uh, stay focused at the shadows because i want you guys to notice that the shadows slowly start getting uh softer now i'm just going to be turning this off and let's open the point light now you do have an option with the point light to get so soft shadows as well however that light does not look that realistic generally uh, but if you do want soft shadows with this light what you want to do is that you want to go down to the source radius and you want to increase this now basically this is sort of like this is increasing the size of this sphere this point which is emitting light and so you're going to see as i increase it as i increase it the shadows do get a little softer However, still, you're going to notice that the shadows do look a little weird back there. Uh, so I would definitely recommend you to still use the area light. However, if you are, if you do want to use uh, this point light, you can use it as well. And you can also increase the source, uh, soft source radius. So this, basically, this is also just to sort of, this is just to modify how the lighting looks so that, so that you can make adjustments um, however way you want, right? And... Basically, in all lights, you're going to have this option, which is which says use temperature. Um, and if I show you the rec light as well, you're going to see that in that you also have this use temperature option. Uh, this is basically an option which you can which you can use to sort of uh, change the color of your light. If I just turn off this point light and if I use this rec light, you're going to see that if I go down um, and use temperature, you're going to see if I reduce the temperature, it's going to become very yellowish. But if I increase it, you're going to see it's going to become very bluish right so that's how uh, your temperature works in unreal engine 5 uh, you can also add like a custom light to this uh, a custom what do you call it color to this however i would not recommend you to do that because of the fact that it doesn't generally it doesn't look that realistic i would recommend you to just stick to this temperature scale and just use this because these are just natural colors uh, on the kelvin scale so that um, and that is why it looks very realistic and stuff like that right so basically I'm just going to be turning this off. And so now two of our lights are covered. Uh, now let's move on to the next light. Let me just close this. And let's move on to our next light, which is going to be the spotlight. And this is, as the name suggests, it's a spotlight. You just have to bring it up. And it's only going to be illuminating a certain part of uh, your scene. So if you want to have like a very dramatic scene in which, in which you're, uh, for example, you're having like an, a criminal in for example, you're having like a criminal inter interrogation, then you're going to want to have this spotlight on the top of the table. And it really depends on the art direction you want uh, and on the style of the art, style of art you want. And right now, you're going to be noticing the fact that this is very overblown. So let's just go ahead and add a post-process volume. And then we're going to be controlling the exposure with that. So I'm just going to go to Add, Visual Effects, Post-Process Volume. And then I'm just going to be moving it down so that we just move it out of the way and search for Infinite. I just write inf and it just comes up and turn it on and then go back to exposure and then turn on the metering mode and the exposure compensation set this metering mode to manual and then this to something i think eight might be good it is too less i think maybe 10 should be good yeah so that's basically how your spotlight works again you can control the spotlight in any different in many different ways so firstly you can increase the intensity this by the way you can do with pretty much all the lights you can just select them and increase the intensity if you want uh, so that's pretty obvious and you can change the light color as well but i wouldn't recommend you i would recommend you to use this use temperature option and then you have this cone angle which is basically uh, used to sort of control uh, where the light goes so basically this is the inner cone which is going to be sort of the focus of the light and this is going to be the spread of the light and so basically if you reduce this like that you're going to see that the main focus of the light is going to be there but the light is not spreading that much either right but if you increase this outer cone angle you're going to see that the light is going to spread quite a lot and but the main focus is going to be still that so you can just play around with this and uh, modify it to your own liking and to your own um scene right so i think that is good and another option which you have in pretty much all lights is this indirect lighting intensity right now you're going to notice the fact that the shadows are very dark right if i go under there you're going to see that it's very very dark 
Now, in some cases, you, you're going to want to want that. Other In other cases, you're not going to want that. So if you don't want that, if you want these parts to be brighter, then what you're going to do is that you're going to be increasing the indirect lighting intensity. As I increase that, you're going to see that the parts which were previously very dark become very bright, right? So that's how you, um, that's how you do that. Uh, now, obviously, you would. Now, I do want to mention one thing here, which is that in in a lot of situations where you have like uh, some reflective material in the dark parts, you would not want to use this as much. Uh, I am going to show you another way to do that because of the fact that uh, you, you're going to see these reflections are going to become very blurry and very noisy uh, in the dark parts. So that's a, a limitation of Unreal Engine 5 currently. However, I do hope that in the future versions, they sort of make this more efficient and make this better. Uh, but for now, this is a limitation that um, your reflections are not going to look that great unless you're using path tracing. And in that case, it's going to look perfect. So let me show you how this looks in path tracing. So I'm going to go to lit and then go down to path tracing. And you're going to see that this is how the scene would look if it was uh, rendered in maybe something like Blender or some, uh, something like that, because this is sort of your traditional 3D renderer, uh, which is present in pretty much all th traditional 3D softwares. And this is the real time renderer right so there's that now if you want to sort of uh, preserve your reflections and stuff like that and you also want to have um uh, and you also want to light up the dark scenes what you want to do is that you want to sort of return this to default so i want you guys to use point lights as fill lights what do i mean by that I, i'm simply going to be first let me just close all this stuff and let me just turn this point light on and basically what we're going to do is that we're going to be placing these point lights where we want there to be some extra light so something like that i think should be a good position and this is what i mainly use point lights for to be honest because point lights are really good for um just adding some fill light into places where we don't actually have light let's just add this right there but be sure to not go overboard because point light will look pretty bad uh so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be obviously reducing the intensity to something like one not even one, I think 0 0.5. <clears throat> that might be good. I'm going to press G to go into game mode. Uh, you can press G to go into game mode. And what that's going to do is that it, that's going to sort of hide all the widgets that you have. So you can look at the scene without any widgets. And you're going to see that uh, if I ignore that reflection down there, you're going to see that we have sort of lit up this whole scene and the reflections look fine as well. Now, what do we, what do, we do about that reflection? You basically have to sort of hide this um, in positions where it's not that visible, right? So maybe something like that might be good. And maybe we can increase some intensity. Now, one thing which you might be noticing is the fact that this uh, this light is actually causing some shadows and it's looking really bad in the background. So how do you fix that? You simply just select the light, then you go down to the details panel, and then you just simply go down to cast shadows and just turn that off. Because all we're concerned with this is the fact that it is lighting our scene a little bit. We're, we don't really want shadows in this. And you can do that with any um a light as well so if i just turn off card shadows you're going to see that the shadows are going to go away and obviously it looks really bad but yeah that's how you can do that right so just save everything by the way uh, if you're following along and then i think we should move on to the next light which is going to be um if i go to lights you're going to see that we have the skylight next now the skylight as we covered before is basically a light which is sort of just um, used to illuminate the whole scene. And uh, this is mainly used with the directional light. So I'm not gonna be using it that much here, but yeah, you can use it if you want, right? So basically the way you use this is by simply first adding, uh, going to lights and then adding a directional light. Now you're gonna see that we have this direction light. If I just move it, something like that, right? And now, right now you're gonna see that because we have these lights, the shadows are slightly brighter, but if I turn them off, you're gonna notice that the shadows are very, very dark, right? How do we fix those dark shadows? You simply use the skylight in this. If I turn the skylight on, nothing really happens. But if I turn real-time capture on, you're going to see now the shadows are going to look a lot better. But if I go ahead and turn real-time capture on, still nothing is going to happen. And that is because we also do need a sky atmosphere with this and volumetric cloud component with this as well. And for those, what you do is you simply go to window, environment light mixer, and then you add a sky atmosphere, volumetric clouds, and then height fog. Because the, what the skylight does is that basically this uses the sky to sort of light up your whole scene, right? But obviously for it to do that, it has it needs to have a sky, right? And previously in our scene, we did not have a sky, right? So that's how lighting works in Unreal Engine 5. I really hope you do know the basics now of uh, how the basic lights work. And this, that's pretty much it, right? You can use, uh, you can basically position the lights in different places and you can sort of experiment around with these lights. So let me just show you how to 
uh, maybe add sunlight to your scene, right? Uh, from uh, sunlight which is coming from a window. So I'm just going to be using this direction light and I'm going to be moving it somewhere there. And so let's just do something like that. And so basically this light is coming in from the window and it is sort of illuminating our scene as well. But what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be duplicating these walls. I'm just going to be duplicating these walls, holding Alt on my keyboard and then duplicate them so that we sort of fill the scene, uh, fill our room from all sides, cover our room from all sides. And so basically, if I go inside this, now you're going to see that all the lights which we have in our scene are basically uh, lit from the sunlight, right? This is basically the sunlight lighting. And you can increase your post process volume uh, exposure compensation to something like 11. I think that looks better. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Also, you have a lot of settings in your post process volume right now, you're going to see that where there is uh, basically in the very bright areas of our image, there is some bloom, there is basically some um, glowiness to it, right? And you can control that as well. So if I just click on bloom, you're going to see that we have the intensity and method. So basically, this is a standard method, which is which does not, in my opinion, look that realistic. However, in some re some scenes, it does look good. Uh, but if I go to convolution, you're going to see that Although in this scene, we're not really noticing that much of a difference. However, in most scenes, uh, convolution looks much, much more realistic. And you can also control the intensity. If you want too much bloom, then you can do that. And if you don't want any bloom, just set it down to zero and it's going to get rid of all the bloom, right? So there's that, right? So we are done with the lighting. Um, and let me show you my course planner in just a second here. Yeah. So if I open my course planner, you're going to see that we basically uh, all these parts were all these things are what we are supposed to learn right now before we start the projects. And we're almost done with this. And all these things are basically the ones which you are going to learn in the projects, right? There are there are a few others as well, other very important things as well. However, these were just a few I could think of. Um, so basically, uh, we are done with, we obviously downloaded it uh, under Engine 5 and we went over the user interface, we went over the movement options, the viewport options, post-processing volume, camera exposure, stuff like that. We did create our first material and I told you, uh, I showed you how where to get textures. So basically um, the Megascans library and uh, that texture pack which we downloaded, this automotive materials pack. Um, so basically you can get textures from there. And then I showed you how to import a mesh. We imported that chair. Uh, we did lighting and we covered, uh, we just covered the types of lights um, in Unreal Engine 5 with Lumen, right? So now we're gonna move on to the landscape tool. So basically we are currently working in an indoor scene, right? What if we want to create like a forest or something like that? Obviously in a forest, there is grass, there are trees and stuff like that, right? So how do you create that um, whole landscape and how do you add foliage? How do you add plants and stuff like that, right? So for that, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna click new level. And then I'm going to be creating an empty level uh, so that we can just work from scratch. We can just save it and just press Control S before doing anything and just give your level a name. So I'm just going to be calling this something like, I don't know, forest. Uh, actually, not forest. Uh, I'm just going to call this landscape tool tutorial. I think that should be fine. Right. Uh, I'm just going to be removing this filter, remove level, and I'm just going to be collapsing this. Right. So now if you press control S, you're going to see that our level has been saved. So how exactly do we create a landscape? We basically go click the selection mode right here and we go down to landscape mode. Now you're going to be noticing a few different modes here and you're not going to be using most of them. You're just going to be using, you're just primarily going to be using the landscape, the selection mode, the landscape mode and the foliage mode, right? And sometimes you're going to be going to the modeling mode and maybe sometimes the mesh paint mode, but those things are very advanced and we're not going to be covering those in this tutorial, right? So I'm just going to go to the landscape mode. And now you're going to notice that uh, it basically is is showing us this huge grid. If I go up using uh, pressing E, you're going to see that there's this whole, uh, there's this huge green grid right here. And we can essentially, uh, if I just increase my camera speed and if I go up, you're going to see that the size of this grid is basically 63 by 63 quads. And that, it just says that right here, right? And if I just decrease it for example, 15 by 15, you're going to see that the size is going to be reduced. So I'm just going to be setting it at 63 by 63 overall resolution. This basically con uh, controls how many subdivisions you have. So obviously if you increase it to something like, I don't know, 1000, you're going to see that you're going to have twice the number of subdivisions. Uh, however, um, you're obviously going to have to increase this as well if you want uh, them to increase uniformly, but I'm just going to be decreasing this because of the fact that the more subdivisions you have, the more resolution you have, the 
uh, stronger computers you're going to need and the more performance cost you're going to have even on a stronger commute computer so i would recommend you to just play around with this and just uh, just um sort of so just set the minimum resolution that you can get away with and so i'm just going to be pressing create right here and now you're going to see that it's going to be creating a landscape for us right so now you're going to see that we have this landscape and we also have this brush tool right here uh so basically what exactly is this used for I'm just going to be showing you in just a bit, but before that, let me just add a basic lighting setup so that this doesn't look that ugly. So I'm just going to go back to my selection mode. Let's go to window, environment light mixer, and let's create a skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and finally a height fog. So that's basically, um, this lighting setup is basically uh, the generic lighting setup which you're going to be using in pretty much all your uh, outdoor scenes, right? So I'm just going to go to skylight and just turn this on real-time capture right now you're going to see our scene looks pretty decent now let's start to work on uh this landscape what exactly is this landscape and how do you modify this so basically i'm going to go back to my landscape mode and with this tool if i just click anywhere you're going to see that it's going to create uh, a bump that's exactly what the whole tool is about right you simply just move around and you can create mountains and landscapes and stuff like that right now i'm not going to go into too much detail about um what sort of mountains you can create obviously uh, proper professional mountains aren't created this way they're created by importing bump maps which you are going to learn hopefully in uh, in a future advanced course but in this course that's not included but yeah you can essentially use uh, this these sculpting tools to sort of create a basic landscape for you and now you're going to see that this looks pretty realistic doesn't it you can create hills and stuff like that so i think that looks very very good right now you also have a lot of different other tools uh, so for example if you have you have this erase tool which you can use to uh, sort of undo basically your sculpting and it just flattens things out you can use your smooth tool to smooth things out if you made like a very sharp cut a sharp sculpt for example if i just increase this like that one second yes yeah, so you're going to see this is pretty sharp right i'm just going to use my smooth tool to smooth it a little bit so that's how it works if you are familiar with sculpting in zbrush or blender or any other 3d software then you are going to be familiar with this as well uh, but anyways this is the flatten tool which just flattens things out and everything is very aptly named it's very um convenient and so this ramp basically just creates a ramp and if you increase it like that and then press add ramp then it's gonna create a ramp for you so that's how it works you can use this erosion tool as well to sort of create erosion and yeah right so basically that's how this whole thing is where a thing works i would recommend you to spend some time on this and to sort of um, understand this however the reason why i'm just giving you the very basics of this is because you are going to learn the, uh, some of the more advanced things in the projects which are about to follow um right now i don't want to bore you with the uh, all the minor details i want you guys to actually learn while making projects right so right now i just want to get you up to speed with uh what exactly this tool is and how to use the very basics of it so basically that is the sculpting tool inside of the landscape mode so i'm just going to get out of my landscape mode and back to the selection mode now let's add some uh firstly let's add a material to this obviously because this looks really bad and we're going to need a material for this so what i'm going to do for that is that i'm going to go to add again add quicksil content and we are again going to be using the mega scans library to add materials to this Right, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be searching for um, grass. Let's search for grass and then you're going to find a lot of these assets. So maybe the one which I'm going to be using is this one, wild grass. It's going to ask me to sign in, but yeah, you can just do that and I will see you when it's done. Right, so once you're signed in, you're just going to have to download this texture and then you can just apply it to your landscape. Right, so once it is completed downloading, I'm just going to press add twice and then with landscape materials, you can't just directly apply it to the landscape. You have to select the landscape first, and then you have to go down into the details panel, and then you have to drop it in uh, the landscape material tab. Once you do that, however, you're going to see that it is applied. However, the scale is very wrong. The scale is very um, tiny, and that's why we are not really, that's why it's not really looking that good. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting this material, clicking it twice. And then I'm going to be pressing the tiling offset. Let's uh, increase this. Let's decrease this, this to something like 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 on both axes. And now I think it looks a lot better. The tiling is not that visible. And yeah, especially from this distance, I think it looks really nice. And you can also obviously control the roughness and the normal and everything like you can uh, with any normal material. I'm just going to be increasing the normal. Let's decrease. Let's increase the minimum roughness. 
because I don't know why it's a little too shiny. So something like 0 0.7 should be good. Yeah, I think that looks a lot more realistic. And obviously, if you zoom out and then look at the landscape, you're going to see that it looks very repeated and it, it is tiling a lot. However, if you go to the front, obviously, your scene is going to be something like this, right? And it's going to have grass on top of this as well, by the way, which we're just going to be working on next. Uh, but yeah, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the tiling. Uh, so basically, how exactly do you add a grass? You simply use foliage, right? What is foliage? Foliage is essentially any sort of plant which you uh, put on your, uh, which you basically add to your scene, right? So I'm just going to be going to home and then we're going to be going to 3D plants. Let's search for, let's go into grass. Let's see if we can find something interesting. So I generally like this Kikuyu grass. I hope that's how it's pronounced. But yeah, this Kukuyu grass is really nice. And so just download it and then add it to your project. Now you're, you're gonna see that unlike pretty much everything else in Megascans, foliage does not come as one object, right? It comes as multiple objects because obviously grass has a lot of variation, right? So I'm just gonna be minimizing this. And the way you add foliage is basically the first way, which is a very dumb way to be honest, is by simply selecting all of them, placing them in your scene, and then you're manually just adding everything. Obviously, you're never going to do that. Uh, but yeah, so obviously, we're not going to do that. We're going to be using the foliage tool, which is access by going to the foliage mode. So firstly, I'm just going to be deleting everything, deleting all these plants. Uh, so let's go to the foliage mode. And Unreal Engine is smart, right? It already saw, uh, it already noticed that that we import, imported a foliage object inside of our uh, content browser. So it automatically added it to the foliage section. However, if it didn't add that, so I'm going to be deleting everything, it is going to say drop foliage here if it did not automatically add that. So what you're going to do is that you're going to be selecting all of them, all of the plants, and then dropping them in the foliage type, in the foliage um, section right there. And by default, I think they are going to be checked. However, if they're not checked, you can select all of them by pressing Control A and then just check any one of them. Make sure that they are checked if you want to start painting, right? Now, if I uh, come in my scene, you're gonna see that we have this, we again have this uh, brush tool, which we can use uh, to paint foliage, just like we had that tool to sculpt landscape. We have that same exact tool. You can control the brush size, something like that should be good. Let's try painting. And now you're gonna see that this looks pretty decent, right? However, the density is not enough. So I'm gonna be increasing, I wanna increase the density a little bit. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be increasing the paint density to one. Now you, you're going to notice one thing is that which is that you can't really go above one, right? So if one is fine for you, then good enough. I mean, this is good enough. However, if you want to go above one, then what you want to do is that you're going to select all of the foliage actors. And then you can go down inside the paint painting tab, you're going to have this density option again. And so if you set this to something like 300, then this is going to give you three times the density. Now, obviously, this is going to be very, very um, taxing on your computer and it's not going to run smoothly if you add a lot of foliage. Uh, but yeah, generally, I think one should be fine for us. So let's add some foliage and let's just. Yeah, let's add some foliage at the back as well. Now, you must be noticing that the foliage is not looking that great. Uh, yeah, especially the foliage, which is at the back. It's not looking that great. And so that's basically done to sort of um, save our computer's resources and to uh, decrease render times. However, otherwise it would look very, uh, it would be very hard to render, right? So basically, if you go close to the foliage, it just uh, becomes high quality. But if you are away further away from the foliage, then it's going to become low quality. However, uh, Unreal Engine uh, Quixel, however, you do have an option to sort of disable this feature. Uh, but I would not recommend you to do that, especially when you're just working on your scene. Uh, I would recommend you to actually do that before you render it. Uh, but that option is essentially to just go down here into the console and enter a console command, which is foliage dot force. And you're going to see it pop up right here, foliage dot force LOD space zero. Zero is basically the highest quality LOD. And when I press enter, I hope my PC doesn't crash, but yeah. All right, perfect. Now you're going to see that all uh, the foliage is appearing in high quality. But again, you can see the frame rate drops, right? Uh, the frame rate drop is pretty significant. But yeah, that's how you can add uh, grass. You can also throw in some other plants, like for example, maybe, what do you call them? Maybe flowers and stuff like that. But that's how you essentially add grass to your scene. And I'm going to show you how it looks in path racing mode. Generally, it looks better in path racing mode uh, as compared to lit mode. But I think in this uh, specific situation, I think lit mode looks better. Uh, but yeah, you get the point, right? You have both options, which you can choose. Uh, anyone from.
So basically, that's how you create a landscape and that's how you add foliage to this. You can obviously um, change the direction of the light, the skylight, and I think that looks really nice, right? So I'm just going to be going back, turning that option off. So foliage.forcelody, and if you write minus one here, then it's going to reset back to the default, uh, which is this low quality preview mode, right? So yeah, yeah. So that's basically how you create a whole forest. You can even add trees in this. However, for trees, you're going to have to download a pack. Uh, you don't, you can't really find trees on the Megascans library, uh, but you can find other um, assets. Like for example, if I just go to the Quixel Bridge app, you're going to see that if I go to let's say a collection, a natural environment collection, um, natural. You're going to see that in broadleaf forest for example you're going to see that we have a lot of different assets right we have some trunks we have some materials and stuff like that so you can just uh, play around with these uh, these assets and you can just download them i'm not going to go into too much detail because, because we're going to be covering all this in uh, the projects however you can just simply drag assets and i think that looks really good that looks very realistic you can just place them wherever you want like that and it just blends in with the whole scene just like it was real so that's how you can create caves, you can create forests and stuff like that, right? You can pretty much create any sort of natural environment which you can imagine. So yeah, that's basically um, how you use this Megascans library. All right, so now we will cover the basics of animations. And before that, I'm going to be introducing you to the Cine camera. Uh, and we're going to be just covering how to make animations and stuff like that, right? And how to render your images as well, right? So basically, you can just follow along in this scene or we can just create a new level. So you can just go to File new level and basically the way levels work in unreal engine 5 is that each level is sort of like a different um uh, place where you can make uh, animations and renders and stuff like that in unreal engine 5 however you can still use all your content browser uh, assets and stuff like that in other levels so i would recommend you to actually create one project for pretty much all your renders or like sort of one type of renders for example what i usually do is that i have one project for my product visualization renders in which i have all my materials and uh, stuff like that imported and then i just create new levels and then I uh, just make different renders and animations in those different levels, right? So actually what we can do is that, let me just go to a new level. So let's create an empty level. And so what I'm going to do is that firstly, I'm going to go to the landscape tool and let's create a landscape. I'm just going to be leaving everything at default. Let's just create a landscape so that we have something to work with. Uh, just save your level, by the way. I'm just going to call this animation underscore basics, right? Uh, let's create a general, uh, let's create a generic lighting setup. So I'm just going to go to window, environment light mixer, skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and height fog. This is essentially the way you're going to be creating uh, your lighting in pretty much all scenes. Then you're going to go to skylight and turn on real time capture, right? So our scene is looking pretty decent. Now let's start uh, with the animation. So basically, I'm just going to be using a cube as an example, but you can do this with pretty much any uh, object. So basically, I'm just going to be going to add shapes and then cube. Let's just create a cube and I'm just going to be moving it down okay. slightly. I'm going to turn on uh, snapping for this so that we can hopefully snap to the ground. Okay, it's not it's not snapping perfectly to the ground. It's going down. So I'm just going to be actually I'm just going to be leaving it up. Let's just make it hover. And then I'm going to be reducing my camera speed as well. So our goal in this tutorial is basically to move this cube from here to here. And then what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be creating a camera and then we're going to make the camera follow this cube. Now, this is these are just the basics. Obviously, you will learn uh, more advanced um, animation in the project section. But yeah, for now, we're going to do that. Right. So basically, before we can start with our animation, we're going to have to create our camera. So I'm just going to go to add cinematic and then cine camera actor. Just click that. And then you're going to see if I move my camera, you're going to see that we have a camera right there. Perfect. Right. So basically the way we can use this is by simply right clicking the camera and then pressing pilot cine camera actor zero. If I do that, now you're going to see that in our main viewport, we're going to actually go inside the camera and we can essentially move the camera using the same tools, uh, which are present to us in the viewport mode. Right? And how do you get out of the camera? You simply right click the camera again and press stop piloting. And the, another option which you have is by simply clicking this perspective mode. And then you're going to see that you have this placed camera option in which this camera is actually selected at the moment. But if you go down and click cinematic viewport, you're going to see that it's actually going to get out of our camera, right? And then we can just go back to the default viewport as well. This is the default viewport and the cinematic viewport just has some extra things like maybe um, those black bars at the top and 
bottom, and then you can just use it for different purposes, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go back to my Cine Camera Actor, and now you're going to see one thing if I just go close to the cube so that you can properly see it, you're going to see that everything is slightly blur in this camera, right? Everything is slightly blur, and the reason for that is because we have depth of field turned on. When depth of field is turned on, you're simply going to go to camera and you're going to go down to focus settings. You're going to see that the focus method is set to manual. And when depth of field is turned on, basically everything which is not in focus is blur. I mean, that's how cameras work in real life as well, right? So how do we set this uh, cube in focus and how do we make the background out of focus? So you simply go down to your focus settings. Then you go down to the manual focus distance. You select this thing right here, this eyedropper tool select it and then just click whichever object you want uh, to be in focus and once we click that you're going to see that the cube is going to uh, is now going to be in focus and the background is going to be blur right how do you control uh the the depth of field how do you control how blurred the background is that is done by going down to the aperture and if i change the current aperture you're going to see if i increase it if i increase it something like that you're going to see that the blur in the background is going to become less and then if I decrease it to something like one, you're going to see that it's going to become very, very blur, right? 1.2 is, I think, the minimum which you can do, right? So basically, this is exactly the way actual cameras work in real life. And you can just use these tools to sort of, um, what do you call it? Sort of adjust your depth of field, right? Now, let's talk about another thing that is how zoomed your camera is or how uh, long your focal length is. You have an option for that right here, current focal length. If I just decrease that, you're going to see that our camera is going to become more wide. So for example, a 16 millimeter camera would look like that. You can just have that camera. Or you, if you want like, a, if I increase this to something like 100, then that's a 100 millimeter camera, it's super tight. And so basically what happens is that in uh, product visualization renders or in any render where your, where your uh, main object should be in focus and everything else should be blurred, you use uh, something like a 100 millimeter or an 80 millimeter lens um, in real life as well and in Unreal Engine as well, right? And then you can obviously control the aperture to uh, control the depth of field right so i'm just going to be setting this back to something like 30 i think 30 should be a good uh default um 30 is a good default starting point and then you can just go anywhere from that from there i'm just going to set this to 1.2 or maybe do something like that should be good right one thing which you might be noticing if you are an actual photographer or if you do know how photography or videography works is that in real life, when you actually control your aperture, uh, when you increase your aperture, your image gets darker because less light can enter your lens and uh, vice versa, right? If you uh, decrease your aperture, the more uh, the, the lens is wider open and therefore more light can enter it. Therefore, your image is brighter, right? But we're not really seeing that effect here. And that is because we don't actually have our um, manual, manual exposure turned on. The exposure is set to auto. So I'm just going to go to add. Let's add a visual effect and post process volume. So we're going to be using this. I'm just going to move it down so that it doesn't bother us. I'm just going to search for infinite, extent unbound, and then let's go to exposure. Let's set the metering mode to manual. Let's set this to something like 9. 8 should be good, I think. Now, if I control my, um, what do you call it? If I go and control my aperture, you're going to see if I reduce it, it's actually going to become brighter, just like in real life. And if I increase it, you're going to see that it's going to become darker. The image is going to become darker. So you're going to have to sort of compensate for that. For example, if I want my depth of field to be high and I want my I want to set this uh, aperture to 1.2, then I'm going to have to go to my post process volume and I'm going to have to set this down to something like 6.5, I think. Yeah, so basically compensate for that brightness increase. And then that's how you that's how it works in real life as well. And that's how you uh, sort of do it in, in Unreal Engine as well. That's the good thing of Unreal Engine 5. Everything, pretty much everything, uh, especially when the uh, as far as the camera is concerned, works exactly the way it works in real life. And yeah, so if you have photography knowledge, if you have videography knowledge, then you can pretty easily um, use this camera. Now, the next thing which we're going to be talking about the camera, that is, how do you change the aspect ratio of this? Right now, this is a 16 by 9 image. How do you make this a square image or how do you make this a vertical image? So I'm just going to be showing you that right now. So if you just go to the film back settings and then you're going to see the sensor width and the sensor height. Now, I usually like to control this uh, to sort of um, change the aspect ratio. So if I just change my uh, sensor width to 20 and sensor height to 20 as well, since they both are the same values, obviously it's going to be, um, what do you call it? It's going to be a square image, right? Or you can use other, what do you call it? Other presets as well to sort of set your aspect ratio and your uh, camera look, right? So if you want to set it to super eight millimeters, then you're going to see it's going to become super tight. It's going to be a super tight shot. And 
yeah so that's uh how this works i'm not going to go into too much detail because this does become pretty uh complex especially when you're working with like very complex scenes it does become it does get quite um complex but i just wanted to keep this a very simple and basic uh, beginner friendly tutorial uh so yeah that's how your cameras work right now let's get out of my camera and let's start working on the animation also if you get out of your camera you're going to see that everything becomes darker that is because uh the post process volume is still acting on our scene right so i'm just going to be disabling that for now uh so generally when you're working on your scene i would like i generally like to sort of disable my post process volume uh especially when i'm out of my camera and that way i can sort of uh just move my camera and just do my things without having to uh worry about the exposure and stuff like that so basically for the animation what you're going to do is you're going to go up right here in this um, film tab and then you're going to go down to add level sequence and then just add level sequence right you can just name this whatever you want press save and now you're going to see besides our content browser you're going to see we have a sequencer now what exactly is the sequencer and what you can do with the sequencer if you're familiar with any non-linear editing software for example premiere pro or davinci resolve you're going to know that this is essentially the same thing as your timeline right this is a timeline in which this axis represents time and you can move forward and backwards in time and then you can add different channels to this you can animate th things via keyframes if you know the basics of animation in i don't know after effects or premiere pro you're going to know how keyframes work so the concept is pretty much the same so if you know about that then this is going to be very easy for you but even if you don't i'm going to be showing you everything in detail right so basically what you're going to do is that firstly i'm just going to be selecting the cube and whatever you want to animate you're just going to bring that inside of the sequencer first right so i'm just going to drag this cube select it and bring it down into the sequencer whatever you want to animate you just bring it down here and just drop it now you're going to see that the cube is obviously here and we have a transform channel with it as well right now if you were if for example you want to animate like the scale of this cube right or any other property which you might uh, think of right you can just click this add drag button and then you can essentially just uh animate anything which you want right so for example if you want to animate uh, add it to a path you can do that you want to trigger an event uh, but th th that's mainly for game development in animation we don't really use that as much we generally just use the transform property for like 90 percent of our animations uh, but we already do have the transform uh, channel in here in many objects however there is not going to be a transform channel so you're just going to have to go to add track and then transform right what exactly is the transform channel transform channel basically if i just open it you're going to see it's going to contain information about the location rotation and the scale so you can essentially animate all these properties separately or together if you want right now how do keyframes work basically a keyframe is sort of like a packet of data which contains um the information about uh the transform of an object right in this case uh so it's going to contain the information about the location rotation and scale and we're basically going to be adding multiple keyframes at multiple time points and what's going to happen is that it's going to transition between them and let me show you an example i know this is confusing but when i show you an example it's going to be very very simple so i'm just going to go to my first uh the zeroth frame the basically the frame number zero and then i'm just going to be selecting my cube right let's add a transform keyframe by clicking this button right here if you click this button you're going to see that this uh, orange dot is going to appear and that just shows us that we have created a keyframe if i move ahead in time for example if i move ahead 75 frames by the way these are not seconds these are frames and uh, you're, you can basically change your frame rate using this button right here so currently we have 30 frames in one second right you can increase that to 60 and that's obviously going to increase the speed of your animation and make your animation smoother as well so let's say we go to the 75th frame and then we just uh, want this cube to sort of move right there move right there right and then we can just move it there and we can add another keyframe now if i go back into my timeline you're going to see that the, the cube is essentially animating from the initial position to the final position right and if i display the animation by pressing spacebar you're going to see that the cube is actually animating right one thing which you might be noticing is the fact that the cube essentially first speeds up right so right now the acceleration is less but the acceleration increases and then it reaches a maximum uh, a maximum acceleration and in the middle point and then the acceleration decreases right until it obviously comes to a stop so the reason for that is because we're using cubic interpolation and that is the default in Unreal Engine 5, right? If you want to change this to linear interpolation, which is going to keep the speed the same from the start to the end, you're going to be selecting both of those three, you know, both of the keyframes by selecting either one of them and then pressing control and selecting the other or by simply dragging uh, and using your mouse to select both of them, right? Once you, both of them are selected, you can just right click either one of them and then the key inter interpolation instead of cubic, you're just going to set it to linear. 
If I do that, now if I play the animation, you're going to see that the speed is constant, right? So gen generally, that's what you are going to want in most cases, right? So that's how you sort of uh, do the basic animations in Unreal Engine 5, right? You can essentially move uh, your object in any direction. Now I'm going to show you how to move an object, for example, in a curved path, right? Uh, so in a curved path, the process is going to be pretty much the same, but a, a, a little different, I would say. Um, so I'm just going to select both of those keyframes and delete them. Let's go to the first frame. Let's set a keyframe right here. Let's go to the last frame. Let's make this the frame number 90. And then let's say I want this animation to go there and there, right? Now, if I just place my object right here, you're going to see that if I add a keyframe, you're going to see that this object is not going to take that curved path which we were intending. It's going to take the shortest path to the other uh, point, right? How do we make it take that, um, uh, that, that curved path, right? So essentially, we want around the around at half of the animation, we want this to be right here, right? Because obviously, it's gonna, then it's going to take the curved path. So we're just going to add it right there. We're just going to move our timeline head and the in the middle of the animation. And then we're going to change the position of the cube. Now, if I add an, an another keyframe, you're going to see now it's going to take that curved path. Right? That's exactly how you do it, right? And generally, what I would recommend you is to just select the first two, uh, sorry, the first uh, keyframe and the last keyframe, right click them and make them linear. However, leave the middle keyframe uh, to be cubic, because if I just make it uh, one second, I'm just going to be showing you an example. So if I make the middle keyframe linear as well, you're going to see if I make this linear, then you're going to see it's not going to be very smooth. It's essentially going to be like a very sharp path, right? It's not going to be a curved path. So generally, I would recommend you to leave the middle keyframe as cubic, right? That's perfect. So that's how you animate inside of Unreal Engine 5. That's pretty much it, right? We're going to be covering, obviously, we're obviously going to be covering more animation in the future, in the future projects. However, for now, I think that should be enough. Now let's move on to uh, how do we animate this camera, right? Actually, I'm just going to undo that so that we had this animation path. Now we're going to have, now we're going to make our camera sort of follow that path, right? So make sure that you are inside your camera. I am not. So I'm just going to go inside my camera like that. Let's place our camera somewhere there. I think we should, uh, I think the starting point should be there. And the animation process for the camera is basically the same. You simply select your camera and drag it inside of the sequencer. And then you're going to see in camera, in the camera, you have a few more options, right? You have the, uh, you obviously have the transform channel, you have the focal distance, you have the focal length, the aperture and stuff like that. You can essentially animate all those things and you can add other, uh, quite a lot of other uh, channels as well if you want, right? But obviously we're not going to be covering that because this is a beginner's course. You can go into detail if you want, right? So I'm just going to be selecting the transform key, transform channel, and then I'm going to be adding a keyframe. Let's move ahead. And at this point, I want the camera to be somewhere here. Let's move the camera right here. Let's add a keyframe. And then you're going to see that from now, uh, from the start to this point, it sort of follows the cube. And then at the end, I'm just going to go to the last keyframe. At the end, I want the camera to be right here. Right? I think I want the camera to be right here. I'm just going to add another keyframe. I'm going to select the first keyframe and the uh, and the last keyframe. Right click them, make them linear. Now let's see our animation. You're going to see that our camera is essentially following the cube. And that's how you make car animations. That's how you make pretty much all animations. This is a very obviously this is a very basic example, but the concept is pretty much the same in even the more advanced animations. So now you know the basics of animation inside of Unreal Engine 5. And this is pretty much uh, everything there is to it to, to animation. Now let's move on to the next step, which is going to be actually rendering out this animation, right? Um, also, I want to mention one thing here. If, if you want to go beyond this course and want to, you want to make different product visualization animations, I do want to mention one thing, which is that I have a lot of courses uh, on product visualization. I have one in which we're going to learn how to make AirPods animation. And then we also made, I think, the Apple Watch animation, uh, like just like the commercials, the actual commercials. Um, and then I think I have another course which in which we made the Microsoft uh, Surface headphones. You can check that out. Uh, check that out as well. So yeah, if you want to take your animation skills to the next level, then those courses are perfect for you, right? But now uh, let's uh, let's render out this animation. So our animation essentially starts at this point and then it ends right here, right? So what we're going to be doing is that we're we're going to be taking our render out region. This is called the render out region, and we're going to be reducing it to the end of the animation, right? Exactly there. You're also going to see that we have the ca this camera cuts channel. And basically, this is uh, way beyond like the end of uh, the animation, right? So we're going to reduce this to the end as well, right? And then 
we can just simply go ahead and uh, go ahead and render this now what if your animation was actually bigger than this sequence right here you can actually extend your sequence and the way we do that is by simply clicking this button right here this number right here once you click it you're going to see right now it says 165 and that's because the end of our frame uh, at the end of our the maximum number of frames we can animate right now is 165 right and then if i increase this to something like 1000 you're going to see our time bell is going to extend and it's going to be till 1000 frames right and then you can obviously increase your render out region and then make sure to increase your camera cuts as well because if for example you leave your camera cuts here and you animate beyond this point in your actual viewport you can actually animate however when you render it uh, anything beyond this frame right here is going to be completely black and it's not going to render properly so i would recommend you to increase your camera cuts as well right but for now i'm just going to undo that because we don't want that many frames and let me reduce this back to 165 perfect Right, so now our animation is pretty much complete. Let's go ahead and render this. For rendering it, you have bas you basically have two options, right? If you just click on these three icons right here, you're going to see that the first option is going to be the movie scene capture. This is the legacy option. This is not uh, not recommended because it's pretty it's a pretty old school um, uh, option of rendering things. But if you just select it and then you click on render animation, so it's going to give you these settings, right? Now, these settings are basically for if you just want a quick and dirty render of what you're doing inside of Unreal Engine 5. Uh, this is not for final, actual final renders. Uh, nobody actually uses this anymore. We are going to be using the movie render queue, which I'm going to be showing you after this. Uh, but yeah, what you're going to do is that you're simply going to be changing your uh, image output format. You can just set it to whatever you want. I generally like to export this as a PNG image sequence. Then I just uh, compile the animations inside of either DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. And we're going to go into how to uh, compile your animations in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve later on in this course. Um, that We're not going to be doing that right now. So I like to generally increase my resolution to 4K. Uh, or if I am rendering a square frame, then I like to go with custom and then I set my resolution to a uh, custom value which obviously both in which obviously both the values are the same because it's a square animation right but right now I'm going to leave it at 4k and then you can set your output directory and then you can just simply go ahead and press capture movie now we're not going to do that because we're going to be using a much better um, option of rendering things so I'm just going to cross this out also be sure to save everything because Unreal Engine can crash at, in rendering uh, I'm telling you from experience but yeah generally just keep saving your project as you work right so for that uh, right now you're going to see that we only have one option and the second option is essentially an add-on which actually comes with unreal engine 5 but it's not enabled by default so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go up to settings plugins and then in the plugin option we're going to be searching for movie render queue right this movie render queue thing uh you're just going to turn this on just check it and then you are going to need to restart unreal engine for this to take effect and for this to be available to render Right, and so I'm just going to do that, and I will see you when Unreal Engine is restarted. All right, so I just restarted Unreal Engine 5, and so you're going to see that we're firstly out of our camera, and secondly, our um, our animation sequence basically is not in our viewport, uh, in our Unreal Engine 5, right? So that, that tab is basically closed. So how exactly do we fix that? Firstly, I'm just going to go to the camera, Cine Camera Actor, right-click that, and Pilot Camera Actor, and then I'm going to go to the level sequence, right-click that, and then I'm going to click Edit New Level Sequence. And so now you're going to see that that's going to come back up and our animation is playing as it was previously, right? So how do we render this using the movie render queue? You simply just click these three dots right here, select the movie render queue. And then if I just click away and then if I click on the render button, you're going to see that now it's going to open up the movie render queue and not uh, the other option, right? So in this you have, uh, you basically you can uh, sort of customize your output using this unsaved config button right here. So if you just click that, you're going to see that you're going to have a few settings right here. And you can even add more settings. So it has a, a lot of flexibility um, in, <clears throat> in, this option, in this menu, right? So firstly, it's going to be importing a JPEG sequence, which we're then going to be compiling into a, a video, an MP4 video later on in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Um, alternatively, another option which we have is uh, to export a BMP sequence or an EXR sequence. PNG or yeah, actually we have these three options. Um, WAV is for audio, so obviously we don't need audio for now. Um, and you can also use the path tracer to render out the path tracing. Uh, what do you call it? Output. So right now we're in Lumen Lit mode. If I go to path tracing, oops. If I go to 
path tracing not vis not visibility thing uh, now you're going to see that is going to look a little more realistic because generally path tracing is a, a little more realistic but it also takes more time to render uh, so i would recommend you to just stay at lit and just uh, use the jpeg or use exr exr is going to be 16 bit which makes uh, which means that it is a little higher quality uh, but generally i just like to go with jpeg i think that works just fine uh, after that i'm going to go to output and then we can just set the output directory to whatever we want uh, so I think something like this, I'm just going to create a new folder anims, and I'm going to create a new folder in this, call it one, select folder. And then I'm just going to be setting the output resolution to 1080p. I think that's fine. And you can use a custom frame rate if you want, but 24 frames per second for now is fine. Let's go down. And I think everything else should be fine. One other thing which I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to be turning on anti-aliasing because right now you're going to see that we have a, a few jagged edges. Uh, these are not that visible in our scene uh, currently. However, when we when we render it, you're going to see that they're going to be uh, they are going to be visible. And in order to prevent that, I'm just going to be and adding some anti-aliasing. Right. So the spatial uh, spatial sample count, I'm just going to set it. I'm just going to set that to one and this I'm going to set to something like eight. I think that should be fine and then i'm just going to go ahead and click accept it's going to show you the output directory right here you can open it and just see it for yourself and then let's press render local and it is going to start to render all right so now the rendering has been completed and if i just go to this output directory you're going to see that we're going to have a lot of images which are uh, which basically represent the frames of our animation right and so we're going to be later uh, we're later going to be compiling this into a whole video uh, however if you do want to compile this into a video right now uh, what you can do is you can just simply go to the internet and then you can just search for a jpeg to mp4 converter and then you can just upload your images in that and then you can just download uh uh, the the video right however the the, the downside for that is obviously you're going to have to upload um uh all the files uh right now the animation was pretty small so it's just 50 mb so that's not going to be a big problem however usually when you're especially when you're rendering an exr sequence uh this folder goes up to gigabytes uh so just uploading everything and then downloading it again is not super viable uh for a lot of people right so anyways that's how you render animations inside of under 105 and yeah so that's basically it for this video i will see you in the next part all right, so now we're going to be making an interior and the main thing for the interior is for you to get a very good reference. Uh, so I just found this reference right here and I'm going to be uh, sort of making the artwork inspired by this reference. Uh, you can obviously choose any reference which you want. Uh, but what I want you to do is I want you to spend a lot of time on finding the reference and find a reference which you want your render to be very close to because um, the thing is in interior design, unless you are a professional interior designer, uh, what I would recommend you, to, uh, rec recommend you to do is to basically almost sort of copy the layouts uh, of these professionals. Um, actually not copy, I would say um, sort of be inspired by them and use the layouts which they use. Yeah, so um, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm trying to say that you need to spend a lot of time in sort of finding the reference, the perfect reference which you want your render to be based on, right? Uh, so yeah, without any further ado, let's start. So firstly, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be finalizing my reference. Uh, so this is my reference right here. And I'm just gonna be opening this image in a new tab. And so I can just basically use this um, properly as a reference. And I can obviously use the Pinterest tab uh, to basically find secondary references, right? Because obviously it's not um, ideal to work from just one reference. You can use apps like uh, PureRef and stuff like that, but I prefer to do it inside of Chrome. Uh, I think it's just more convenient, if that makes sense. Um, right. So also we're going to be using Blender for the assets, or you can obviously download assets from the internet as well. However, it would be recommended for you to basically know at least the basics of Blender and Blender Kit and other add-ons like that, right? But if you don't know, um, but if you don't know, like even the basics of Blender, I'm just going to be teaching you exactly how to use it in just a bit, right? So let me just first go ahead and create a new Unreal project. Uh, so you can just go to games and create a new blank project. Uh, make sure that ray tracing is turned on um, because that's going to make your re render uh, that's going to make your scene look a lot more realistic but you do need to have an nvidia rtx graphic card for this if you don't have an nvidia rtx graphic card then you can feel free to just turn it off but do note that you might need to spend some more time and effort on uh, the lighting part uh, to make it look a lot more realistic right it's not going to look that good by default 
Anyway, so I'm not going to be creating a new project. I'm just going to be opening one of my recent projects. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have most of the assets which I need already imported. Uh, so I'm just going to be using those assets, right? Um, and yeah, I have all the materials and stuff like that imported. So I'm not going to waste your time uh, trying to import them again. So let me just open this project. And while Unreal Engine is opening, you can just simply search for um, sort of the furniture or the assets which you want in your scene, right? So firstly, I want a sofa. So I'm just going to search for sofa 3D model. Um, and I usually use Sketchfab for this because Sketchfab gives you really nice results. And you can even get some pre-made um, sort of rooms from this, which you can use, uh, which you can maybe extract the assets from and create your own stuff. Or you can maybe even just download a whole sofa set, something like that. I think that's going to look pretty good. Um, or you can just simply download individual assets as well. So you basically have a lot of these options um, to download as assets. Um, so I think you can maybe just download um, whichever one you like. How about something like this maybe? Yeah, so um, once you have decided which asset you want to download, you can just simply open that in Sketchfab and then you can just click download 3D model and then make sure to download it in FBX format because that's easy, pretty easy to open inside of Unreal Engine and just wait for it to download and then we can just open it in Unreal Engine. And while that is happening, we can just simply open Blender as well. And I'm going to be showing you how to import assets from Blender as well. So what I'm going to do for Blender is that uh, I'm just going to create a new project. I'm just going to delete everything. And so we have this Blender Kit add-on installed. If you don't have this Blender Kit add-on installed, you can just simply go to um, the internet, search for blenderkit.com. And then you can uh, just download Blender Kit. Make sure that you have Blender downloaded, of course, and then you can just follow these instructions to uh, install the add-on. And once you have that add-on installed, you can just simply go and search whatever you want inside of Blender Kit. So I'm just going to be searching for something like Sofa. And I'm just going to go to Search Filters and click on Free first. And so now you're going to see that we have all these free assets, which look pretty good. Um, So now it's basically up to us which asset we choose. Uh, let me just go back to my reference and let's see what kind of sofa is this? Okay, so this is more like uh, cloths. It's sort of like a um, living room sofa. I want something a little more fancy. Um, so maybe something like that. How about that? I think that's going to be good. Yeah, let's go with that because that has a lot of wrinkles as well, which make it look very realistic. So I think we're going to go with that. And apart from that, let's download other assets as well. You can just also, by the way, in Blender, you can just click on an asset to start downloading. And now it's just going to start to download. Just wait for it to complete. Let's look at our reference while it's happening. We also need a coffee table. And so let's wait for this to download. Right, so now we have this sofa inside our scene. Um, and it looks pretty decent, although it's pretty black, so I can't really tell. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Right, so now basically, how do you, how exactly do you export assets outside of Blender and into Unreal Engine? It's pretty simple. You simply just go to File, Export, and FBX. And once you select that, you can just simply um, decide to export wherever you, wanna, wherever you want. I'm just going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call it um, Interior. I'm just going to call it um, maybe main underscore sofa export FPX. And now we can just go back to Unreal Engine. And in Unreal Engine, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be, oops, I'm going to be going to file, new level, and I'm just going to be creating a brand new empty level. So just create that. Also press Control S so that we can save this level. I'm just going to call it interior SS. Press save all and Control S. Right. Uh, so with this, we can simply go ahead and start to build out our scene. So for that, firstly, I'm just going to be creating a landscape so that we have sort of like a base point to work with. And then I'm just going to go to Window, Environment Light Mixer, and I'm just going to be creating a basic lighting setup. So the basic lighting setup consists of a skylight, atmospheric light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud, and height fog. If I just close that, you're going to see that we have a basic sky and a whole lighting setup, which looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to go ahead and create a shape, which is going to be a cube. And by the way, right now, one thing which you're noticing is that um, this shadow is pretty black and it looks very um, unrealistic. 
So to fix that, I'm simply going to go to Skylight, and I'm just going to turn on real-time capture. So that's going to uh, make our shadows look a lot more realistic. And I'm just going to be turning on the snapping of all these. So let me move, the, move it down slightly. And let me scale it down in this axis, something like that. And then I'm just going to be scaling it up like that. So that we can sort of start to build out our scene. I'm not going to add the walls for now. Uh, before adding the walls, what I'm going to do is add... Let me actually get rid of this landscape now. Because I think our cube is enough. Uh, just press save all. Now we're ready to import that sofa. So I'm just going to go to my content folder. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to create a new folder called interior assets. And here I can just import all my assets. Uh, so I'm just going to go up to where I exported that model. And I think it was in this interior assets folder. Main sofa right here. So I'm just going to be dragging this inside of our scene. Press import all. Now we just have to wait for it to import. So now the asset has been imported and now you're going to see that we have all these separate um separate sort of meshes which combine to make that sofa so i'm just going to be selecting the first one i'm going to shift select the last one so that we have all of them selected and then i'm just going to drag them in to our scene and i think it looks pretty good doesn't it i think it looks pretty decent and we can work with this right so i'm just going to move it down slightly let me turn off snapping let me move it down so that it is resting on our floor that's cool i think the position of this is pretty fine as well let me move this slightly here and i think our position is pretty good right so now we can just start to build the whole scene along with this uh so we have the sofa let me just add a coffee table now uh so for the coffee table what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be let me get rid of this sofa uh from this i'm just going to right click the corner sofa and i'm going to Click select objects. Now I am assuming that you know the basics of uh, Blender 3D. So if you don't know that, I would recommend you to check out my Blender course first and then come back to this. Uh, because usually before uh, starting to learn Unreal, Unreal Engine, uh, you are recommended to at least know one 3D software like Blender or Maya or something like that. Um, so I'm just going to be searching for a coffee table. And I want to go for something a little more artistic, uh, like this one right here, this one. Um, so maybe, yeah, how about that? I think that should be pretty good. Art design, luxury marble coffee table. Let's wait for it to download. Also, you can export multiple assets at once uh, if you want to, uh, because obviously just exporting one asset and then just waiting for, uh, waiting for, um, Blender to download another asset, then exporting that and importing it to Unreal Engine. It's very time consuming and very inefficient. So we can just uh, we can just add multiple objects in one scene and then we can just export them all at once. So I'm just going to do that now. Uh, so apart from our, uh, from our coffee table, we basically need a lamp as well. So I'm just going to search for a lamp. Let's see what we have. As we have a lot of these really good options. Um, Maybe something like that. I'm just going to get that wall lamp. And I'm also going to get this luxury lamp as well. Now, when you are um, basically importing multiple assets, what I would recommend you to do is basically convert all these into one asset. Also, this uh, coffee table has come inside of this, uh, what do you call it? Uh, this wall lamp collection. So I'm just going to be dragging it out like that. And now you're going to see that we have three assets in our scene. Uh, however, the problem with this is the fact that, for example, this uh, coffee table right here, this has multiple assets, right? So, for example, it has this top part, it has this bottom part, and it has these separate parts, right? And so exporting these inside of Unreal Engine is going to be a slight bit of a hassle for us. So I just want to convert all of them into one mesh. So ex how exactly do we do that? We simply select all of them by selecting the first one and then shift selecting the last one so that we have all of them selected. And now we can just press Control J on my keyboard. And when I press Control J, it's all going to convert into just one mesh like that so that's perfectly what we want let's do that with the other assets as well so i'm just going to be selecting all these and we basically have a point light in this which we don't want so i'm just going to get rid of that i'm going to select all these Control j and that should be it as well and similarly for this wall lamp i think th this wall lamp is just one asset 
by default. So I, I don't think we need to do anything with that. Uh, now, right now, you're going to notice that obviously all these assets are um, basically intersecting with, you, with each other and they don't really look that uh, look correct. Uh, but we don't need to worry about that because we, we're obviously going to have them as separate assets inside of um, Unreal Engine. So we can just move them and place them wherever we, wherever we want. So I'm just going to go back to... Yeah, also, if you want to import this model from Sketchfab, you can just simply download it. And let me show you how to import this inside of Unreal Engine as well. So once you open the zip file, you're going to have the source file and the textures file. So you can just simply open the source file first and you can just drag this FBX out anywhere you want. I'm just going to drag it in on my desktop and then I'm just going to be dragging it inside of Unreal Engine like that. Press import all and then you're going to notice that we have the sofa in our scene as well. Perfect. So this does come with um, textures from what do you call it? Uh, from uh, from Sketchfab. However, we don't really want to use that because this texture is a little too um, grungy and old school looking for our liking. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be um, basically I'm going to be um, creating. I'm going to be applying another texture to this later on when we are working on the texturing of the scene. So let me just rotate this like that 90 degrees and let me place it somewhere there. And let's see what else we want. Let's go back to our reference. Um, so maybe we, we want some plants, some dead plants. So you can maybe search for plant and make sure that free first is selected if you want free assets. Um, and I basically want some dead plants. I think something like that should be good. Let me just add that. And apart from that, I mean, all this comes down to your personal preference because I think that's good or is it um you can even add stuff like this like a straw basket um in your scene it's gonna make it look very um old school if that's what you're going for um and you know, we can maybe even add a guitar in our scene. Also, once we imported this um, branches uh, asset, we want to make sure that we, we want to make sure that we convert these into one um, asset as well. So I'm just going to press Control J so that we have it converted into one. And apart from that, how about we search for dead plants? Let's see what we come up with. So you have this dead tree. Um, let me download that. It's just decorations at this point because we have the main, um, what do you call it? The main assets which we wanted in our scene and we just need some decorations. I think we're good for now. We're good for now. We can add more things if you want. Let me just search for ways. Let's see if we have good ways. Um, how about something like that? Let me download that. Make sure to convert it into um one asset. There two, just control J. And now we think we're good to go. Just make sure to collapse all these collections so that we can see how many assets we have. We have around like um six or seven assets. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna be going to file, export, and FBX. And let me just Call this assets 01 because this, this is sort of like a, an asset pack which we are creating for ourselves and now i'm just going to be importing this inside of unreal engine so i'm going to right click here uh, actually instead of right clicking i'm simply going to be just dragging that in let me close this folder and let me just drag this assets one fbx in our scene um click import all just wait for it to complete so now our assets have been imported we have some errors but i'm just going to go ahead and ignore them and now if I just go down, actually, if I go up, you're going to see that we have all our assets imported. So I'm just going to be selecting all of them and I'm going to be dragging them in our scene like that. And after that, we can obviously move them individually. So actually, let me just undo that. Let me drag them all in, however, on the side so that I can easily just take one of them and move them apart. And so this is going to be our coffee table. So I'm just going to scale that up. Make sure to scale it up uniformly. And I'm just going to rotate it like that. 
or like that maybe I think that should be good and then maybe move it across like that and I think it looks pretty good um apart from that we can also drag this lamp just drag it across maybe place it right there I am going to be scaling it up slightly like that and I think it looks pretty decent then we can maybe take this as well and scale it up and then maybe place this one and on this corner and then we can maybe take this um ways thing or actually let me take this thing right here and let me place this on top of this um what do you call it yeah this stand right here let me place this on top of it And move it up and just make sure to place it precisely you can even go to the top view and the top orthographic view so that you have a better idea of where to place it and i think that should be good now i'm just going to take this thing right here um and then i'm going to be dragging it and placing it on this table we can also import some books from uh, the mega scans asset library and place them in our scene as well and so this is going to go on the wall so before that let me just create the walls first uh so i'm just gonna what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna be uh selecting my floor i'm gonna hold alt on my keyboard and i'm gonna be moving it across and then i'm gonna be rotating it like that 90 degrees exactly make sure that you have um, your snapping rotation snapping turned on so that you can move it precisely And so I'm just going to be moving it across. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to be leaving a slight bit of a gap between the floor and the wall. It's just going to create this shadow effect on the corners, which I personally really like. Uh, but obviously, this comes down to your personal preference. Uh, so I'm going for a very tall, um, a tall sort of ceiling look. So I'm just going to set it there and place this right there as well. Just leave a slight bit of a gap. between the wall and the floor i think that should be good now what we can do is we can simply select this both of these um so go to rotation mode pr press and hold alt on my keyboard and then i'm going to be rotating them 90 degrees like that let me go to my top view and so now i'm just going to be placing them go to movement tool and i'm going to be placing them like that somewhere like that and then move it across that should be good let's go back to our perspective mode let's see how it looks and i think our scene looks pretty good doesn't it we can add a ceiling as well but i'm not going to do that for now because otherwise we won't get any light in our in our scene which is not something we want for now we are going to be creating windows later on so don't worry about that also i think this uh, whole room is pretty small at the moment so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be going to my top view again I'm going to be selecting the floor and then I'm going to be scaling it up. Something like that. And then I can maybe just move uh, two of these back. Then scale it up, scale them up as well. Something like this. Now this part might be getting a little repetitive. But what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to spend a lot of time planning your scene beforehand so that you don't have to sort of just eyeball these movements. I'm doing it because I want to show you guys how to sort of do the process. However, I would recommend you guys to sort of plan your scene out in advance if you are um, making a proper scene for, let's say, a client or something like that. And you know what? I'm just going to be moving all these assets to one corner. Uh, so I'm just going to select all these assets let me select all this stuff and the sofa as well and then i'm going to be moving it to one corner like that i think that should be good we can obviously add more assets to others to, to the other sides uh, of the room as well but i think for this for now this should be good 
right so now let me just go ahead and place this light on the wall so let me just first rotate it 90 degrees like that and then i'm just going to be moving it across moving it up then let's just place it like that and i'm actually going to be having two of these okay so i i don't know if i rotated it a little more than i should have okay i think this is this lamp is a little misoriented i think let me just rotate it like that then move it forward that should be good and i think it looks pretty good and that is a pretty good position for the light maybe move it up slightly and then maybe duplicate it by pressing alt on my keyboard then maybe having three of these not three actually let me just have two of these but then move it up quite a lot i think that should be good and then we can maybe have a large painting uh right there so actually let me just go ahead and add the painting for now uh so for the painting let me just save everything by the way press save all because i don't want you to lose any progress and just wait for it to complete so i'm just going to go to add add quick still content and we can just go to unreal bridge now i'm pretty sure what you know what this is you, we can basically import mega scans assets from this so i can just search um for frame and so we're going to have a lot of these painting frames here and let me just download this one right here decorative picture frame you can just download it i think medium quality should be fine and then you can just add it just press add twice and it's going to add it and browse over to where you saved it browse over to the location of this asset and then we can just drag it right there and i think it looks pretty good however it is a little old school which i think should go with our scene i mean our scene is a little artistic isn't it uh and then we can maybe scale it up oops scale that up like that i think that should be good let me move it slightly there maybe a little down and we have to basically put a picture inside this right so for the picture what i'm going to do is that i'm going to go to the internet and i'm going to search for abstract painting and you can just go to either um, unsplash.com or maybe pexels.com. Uh, these are some free, what do you call it, free stock image or stock footage websites from where you can get a lot of these really cool paintings. I think this one looks really nice, doesn't it? Let me download that. Download free. Uh, the credits for this picture goes to Steve Johnson. Thanks, bro. Uh, and once you have downloaded that, you can simply drag that inside of Unreal Engine and you can just drop it in like there. And then what you can do is you can simply go ahead and uh, just create a new shape, which is going to be a cube. And then you can just bring that forward, something like that. Make sure to place it such that it covers the frame and it looks good as well. Something like that. And then you can just drag that image on that, what do you call it, that cube. And it's going to look pretty good, doesn't it? It looks pretty good. Perfect. So our scene is coming along pretty well. The frame is a little too thick in my opinion. I think it would have been better if it was a little, um, basically not so thick. But I think we can work with that. Anyway, so I think we now we need some chairs. So for the chairs, you basically have a few options. You can either just use Blender and Blender Kit to just import some chairs as well. Or you can, another thing which you can do is you can simply open Unreal Engine. And I'm going to be using a pack which is made by uh, sort of like an asset pack which is made by Unreal themselves. And it's called um, the Chairs and Tables Pack. So you can just go to the Epic Games Launcher. The Epic Games Launcher is basically the app which you used to install Unreal Engine. Also just save everything by the way. So you can just open the Epic Games Launcher. So once you're in here, you can just simply go to the Unreal Engine tab. Then just go to the Marketplace tab. And once you're in the Marketplace, you can just search for Chairs and tables and so basically you can just search for free as well just click free um i think it wasn't called this then i think i'm just gonna search for chair let's see what comes up yeah this one right here uh it's called the twin motion chairs and tables back one and you have a lot of these really cool chairs and tables inside of this pack which you can use inside of your scenes so you can just um what do you call it you can just download this pack and then you can add it to your project just click add to project show all projects and then you can just select whichever project you want to add it to so i want to add it to this one 
and it's it says that it's not compatible with Unreal Engine 5.1 so I can just add it to the project with 5.0 and just click add to project and this should ideally appear right here um yeah that's where it is dm chairs and tables back one and the download size of this i think is around a few gigabytes let me just show you the exact download size yeah it's around 2.8 gigabytes so you can just download that and then you can open this folder right here you can go down to chairs and tables chairs and you have a lot of these chairs right here you can just choose whichever one you want from these and so How about something like this? I'm just going to be importing a few chairs and then we're going to see which one looks the best. We can obviously decide from them later on. But for now, I'm just going to import all the ones which I think look decent. And so, as you can see, you have quite a lot of variety in these. Yeah, and you also have a lot of these tables. However, I don't think I'm going to need any table. Maybe I can use like a side table or something like that. Uh, let's see if we find something interesting. I think we're good. I don't think I don't think we need that many tables. Uh, okay, so among these, you can just choose whichever one you want. Uh, I think I'm going to choose this one right here. Let me get rid of these two. I think this one looks really nice. And then I can just rotate it like that. And then place it like that. Maybe even duplicate it like that. And then place it right there as well. And I think it looks pretty good. Yep. Now this is a, a little subjective. If you think your chairs are not looking that great, then you can just not add them. But I think they look pretty decent. So I'm just going to add them. Right. So I think our scene is coming along pretty well. Let's see if we have anything else left. Uh, I think we're looking pretty decent. Um, we can maybe fill this wall up with some paintings and stuff like that as well. So let me search. Let me go to Quixel again. And let's see if we have any other frames as well. So let's go to frame. Yeah, so we have this damaged picture frame, which is not exactly what I look, I'm look. i looking for. I think something like that should be good as well. Uh, or maybe we can just duplicate this exact frame and then we can just change the painting inside of it. So I think that's going to be a decent option as well. So I'm just going to duplicate it like that. Bring it forward. And so the thickness, thickness of this cube is quite a lot, uh, but it doesn't really matter that much because obviously it's not visible. Just place it right there, move it back. And so now we can just look for another painting. So I'm just going to go back to Unsplash. Let's look for something similar. I'm just going to scroll down so that we can find maybe something similar. I think that should be good. Uh, this is again made by Steve Johnson. So thanks, buddy. I, and just wait for it to download. And I'm just going to drag it inside of Unreal Engine. Drop it right there and place it like that. I think it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? We can maybe scale this up slightly. Actually, not slightly. I want this to be pretty large. One second. I'm just going to move it right there. And I'm going to have to now scale this cube separately. Because obviously the scale of the cube and the painting are not uniform. Um, I think it's a little too large. I think I made it a little too large. I'm just going to scale it down. I think something like that should be good. Is is the painting a little too similar, I think? I think it is. Um, we can maybe even go for something a little colorful. Again, Steve Johnson. Thanks, man. And let's try for something. Let's try something like this. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think it looks pretty decent. And once we start to sort of add colors and textures to our scene, I think it's going to come along pretty well. And so let me just make sure nothing else is left. Then we can start to work on the texturing.
but I think we can add some more things as well. We can maybe add a carpet underneath this um, table and we can maybe add some more stuff on the table as well. So let me first do that. I'm just going to go to add Quixel content and I'm just going to search for books. And so we have a lot of these uh, books, which are pretty good. I'm just going to download this one floral hand cover book. Let me just place that on the table. Let me move it up like that. And then we can maybe add another one. I think that should be a good one. Decorative hand cover book. Let me just add that on top of this. And let me just move it slightly up. I think we need one more book and then we'll be good to go. Let's add that one, white and blue. Let's move it up, and then rotate it. 180. We can maybe sort of switch the position of these two books. So I'm just gonna rotate them like that, 180 degrees. And then we can bring them down. I think that looks pretty good. Yep, I think the effect it's giving is pretty decent. You can maybe sort of make the books a little uneven as well. All right, so I think it looks pretty decent. Next up, what we can do is we can, let's go back to our reference. Let's go to Pinterest and let's find some other references as, as well. Uh, because I don't think we should sort of um, confine ourselves to just one image. Uh, let's work on the ceiling, yeah. So. What I want to do for the ceiling is that, let me just save everything, by the way. Just save all. Let me just duplicate the floor. Hold Alt, move it up, like that. And now we're not going to have any light, of course. But just give me a second. I am going to, we are going to start working on the lighting as well. So for now, I'm just going to click this lit button right here. And I'm, let's go to unlit mode so that we can better see what's going on. Actually, instead of the unlit mode, let me just create a light because I think that's going to give us a lot better results. Let me just go to add lights and then let's just add a rec light. This is obviously temporary. It's just to see what we're working with. So that at least it doesn't look that bad. I think it's good. All right. So now what I'm going to do is that, um, yeah, let's go back to our reference. Yeah, let's work on the ceiling. So for the ceiling, what I'm going to do is that I think it looks pretty decent already. However, I think we need some ceiling lights as well. Uh, so let me just go to blender again let me search for ceiling light i don't think i'm spelling ceiling correctly but i think it's fine let's see if it comes up with something um i think this one looks really nice let's add that you can add that as well i think that's gonna be pretty cool ceiling square lamp um and then we can maybe add some of these light bars as well so i'm just gonna get the ceiling lamp uh, collection out there and so also by the way i can just get rid of all this stuff and then let's um let's actually get rid of all these collections and let's just start from scratch because obviously we don't need all those assets again right i just need this ceiling lamp and let's see if we need anything else as well let's look for something um you can even go for something a little more fancy like this However, I think I'm going for a more minimalist design. I think just one ceiling lamp should be enough, in my opinion. Yep. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to be importing this. Uh, actually, let's just confirm if we need anything else. Because if we do, then we might need to just import all that again, which is going to be a little bit of a hassle. Let's actually add a window as well. Yeah. Let me search for window. Uh, because obviously we're going to need windows as well, right? Um, I think something like that should be good. You can obviously add a different one if you want. However, I think that should be good. Because I'm basically going to make the window sort of like a whole wall window. Um, the, le the length of it is, it is going to be equal to the whole wall. Um, let me make sure that this is just one asset. Yep, it is. And perfect. Let me make sure that this 
ceiling lamp is also one asset it is not i'm just going to be selecting all these and press ctrl j let me select all these manually i'm going to select all these ctrl j i don't think we need this one right here let's just join them Yeah, so I think we're good to go with these. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be... Yeah, let me just export this. So I'm just going to go to File, Export, FBX. And then I can just call this, for example, like FB Assets 2. Let's export that. And let's go back to our folder. Yeah, so interior SS right here. I'm just going to create a new folder in this. And I'm going to call this 2 so that we can sort of make our scene a little more organized. And we, we are going to be working on the organization of our scene in just a bit as well. But let me just open that asset too. Let's import that, import all. And now we can just wait for it to import. Just ignore all these errors. And let me just first import this um, window. Let's place it right there. And rotate it. 90 degrees. I'm just going to place it right there for now. And we're going to be working on it in just a bit. And then let's select the ceiling lamp. Let's add it to the ceiling. I'm going to rotate this like that, 180 degrees. And then I'm going to be scaling it up quite a lot. And then we can maybe scale it up in these two axes as well to make it wider. Um, This bulb doesn't really look that good, does it? Um, I think it was better in this one, wasn't it? Okay, so it was the same. Never mind. Maybe we need to scale it down slightly. I think that should be good yeah all right so i think our scene is almost complete now let's start to work on the what do you call it let's start to work on uh the lighting and the texturing actually you know what let's work let's work on the lighting first and then we're going to be working on the texturing right so what i'm going to do for the lighting is that i'm going to be using this window as the primary light source uh so i'm just going to be placing it right there something I'd like something like that i think should be good and then i'm just going to be dragging this um right there and then i'm going to be moving this right there move it such that it is just intersecting uh the window slightly and then i'm going to be scaling this window up as well because obviously i want i want this window to be i want the length of this length of this window to be covering the whole wall i think something like that should be good and then we can move this even further or i think we should just move this further like that and then we can just duplicate this by pressing alt and then we can create a one right there and so i think that should be a pretty good window i think that's a very good um lighting setup and so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be moving my direction light to sort of start working on the lighting uh just save all by the way and so i'm just going to be getting rid of this rec light for now uh, because obviously we want to move on to proper lighting. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm simply going to be selecting my direction light. But before that, let me just go ahead and sort of organize this scene a little bit more. Uh, because I think right now it looks very bad. So I'm just going to select all these. And then I'm going to press control. Select this one. And then select press, press shift and select this one. And then select these as well. So these are basically all the furniture assets. And with all of them selected, I'm just going to be clicking this button right here. To create a new folder i'm just going to call it furniture and i'm just going to be collapsing that folder so that we can sort of keep our scene organized a little bit and this the all these cubes are basically uh what do you call it all these cubes are basically the structure of the home so i'm just going to create a new folder with them and i'm going to call it structure perfect so i think our scene is pretty organized now and now we can start to move the direction light so just select that and I'm just going to be moving it somewhere there so that it's easier for us to rotate it. Let's rotate it like that. And I think we should maybe rotate it like that as well. Why is the sunlight not coming in? I think the reason for that is because we have this window, which is, I think, covering the whole sunlight. So, okay. So what I'm going to do for this is that Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm just going to be getting rid of this. I'm just going to be hiding this um window for now. 
I'm just going to be moving the, the direction light so that we have a good sunlight coming in our scene. I think something like that should be good. I think that should be a good position for the sunlight or maybe even a little bit, something like that. I think something like that should be good. Right, so also one thing which uh, I think I should do is maybe add a post process volume. So I'm just going to go to add visual effects, post process volume. And the reason we, why we're doing this is because uh, right now you're going to see that we have auto exposure turned on. So for example, if I look at something bright, you're going to see that our screen is going to get darker. And if you look at something dark, our screen is going to get brighter automatically, which is not something we want. We want the exposure to be in our control. And so I'm just going to open the post process volume. Let's just search for infinite extent because we want this to affect the whole scene. Let's go down to exposure. Let's turn on metering mode and exposure compensation. I'm going to set this to manual. Exposure compensation, I think, should be somewhere around 11. Or, yeah, I think 11 should be fine. And, yeah, also one thing which you can do is you can maybe sort of um, modify the skylight. Uh, you can increase the intensity scale of the skylight to sort of make this um, affect the scene a little more. This is going to increase the indirect lighting of our scene. If I just get rid of this, you're going to see that it's going to become, become pretty dark. But if I turn this on, you're going to see that our scene is going to get a lot brighter and a lot better. And so I think that's basically it for our lighting. I think our lighting looks pretty good. This is how it looks in cinema in lit mode. And this is how it looks in the path tracing mode. Path tracing mode is obviously going to look a lot better usually. And I think we're going to be using the path tracing mode to render this image when you're rendering it finally. However, I think for now, being in lit mode is fine as well. All right, so now let's start to work on the textures and then we're going to be tweaking the lighting later on as well. So for the textures, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be using firstly the Megascans asset library. So you can just go to add and add Quixel content. Another thing which I'm going to be doing is that I'm simply going to be using a library which comes in the Epic Game Store, which is called, if I just go to the marketplace and if I search for automotive materials, you're going to see that we basically have, um, yeah, this one right here, automotive materials. Basically, this is a collection, a material collection made by Epic Games themselves. And this is basically made for cars. So it has all sorts of metals. And uh, the part which we're uh, we're interested in is that it has a lot of wood, wood materials. And it also has a lot of um, fabric materials and leather materials and stuff like that. So we can use all those materials in our interior scene as well. So you can just download this asset pack and then add it to project just the way we added the previous one, the previous asset pack. So once you have that installed, you can just simply go to this automotive materials tab. And then you can go to the materials folder and inside of interior, you're going to find a lot of these very interesting materials. If you just go to uh, textile, you're going to find a lot of these really good cloth materials. You can just apply them to your scenes or you can obviously use Megascans assets as well. So let me first start with adding the material to the floor. So for the floor, you can either add like a marble material or you can add like a wooden floor material. I think I'm going to go with marble floor. So you can just go to add, add Quixel content. And then you're going to search for marble. Um, so you can either search for search for a material like this, or you can just go to home surfaces, and then you can just go down to marble. And you're going to find all sorts of marble here. And so I think I'm going to use that. Or I think that should be good. Uh, beige marble tiles. Let me just add that in our scene. And let's apply it to the floor. Uh, so right now the scale of this material is way too high so i'm just going to double click the material right here and then i'm going to be turning on the styling slash offset and then i'm just going to be selling setting it to something like three so basically the higher this value is the higher the tiling value is the smaller your asset is going to be so i think something like that should be good and i think the material looks pretty decent you can obviously choose other ones if you want as well and now let's work on the walls so for the walls you can just search for um, maybe go to plaster and then you can just choose for something like, I think this should be good. Stucco facade, whatever this is called. I don't know how to pronounce it. Just to add that and let's apply it to the walls. I think it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? You can just leave the walls, uh, to be the color that they are, which is white. Um, however, I think adding a proper material to your walls is going to make them look a lot more realistic. And then you can just tweak the colors as well. You can maybe make it brighter if you want uh so you can just go down to albedo controls just check that and then you can turn off the brightness to something like two which i think is going to make our scene look a lot better 
press save all by the way and i think we need to sort of i think uh increase the indirect lighting intensity of our direction light so let's go to the direction light let's increase the indirect lighting intensity which is going to make our scene a lot brighter maybe set it to something like three i think yeah three should be the sweet spot and i think our scene is, scene is looking pretty good now we can just search for some more leather materials oops leather and then you can just choose any leather material which you find. I think these are some really good options. However, I'm going to be using the leather material material which comes with this automotive materials pack. So I'm just going to go to down to uh, leather. And you have a lot of these really good options. So you can maybe choose something like that. I think that looks really nice. And then you can choose that for that sofa as well. Or you can choose something a little more interesting like that maybe actually i'm gonna go with that i think so i think you're gonna have to apply it to each and every element of the sofa separately which is a good thing as well because then you have a lot of freedom and yeah i think it looks pretty decent doesn't it, it looks pretty good and then we can maybe move on to the next step which is going to be let's apply this leather material to these as well Actually, I think all of them having the same exact material is not going to look good. Let's apply this gray material to these. Um, what do you call them? These uh, chairs. And let's apply a marble material to this table. So I'm just going to go down. Actually, let me just go back to Megascans. And let's search for marble. Surfaces. Go down to marble. And then you can, I think something like that should be good. Rainforest Kialo Marble. I think that's what it's called. Just apply it. And I think it looks pretty good. I think the bottom part should have maybe like a metal material or something like that. So let's go back to our collection. Uh, automotive material collection. And let's go down to metal. Let's maybe apply metal material to this. Something like that should be good. You can even add sort of like a reflective marble material to this as well. Maybe something like this, coffee marble. Let's add that. Let's try this out. I think that looks a lot better. Yeah, I think our scene is coming along pretty well. Um, let's apply a good material to this ways as well. You can even add something like glass to this. So you can just go to glass and you can add it like that. Now, glass usually doesn't look that realistic in Unreal Engine. Um, but we're, since we're going to be using path tracing for the final render, I think it, looks, it should look pretty decent. You can just add different variations of the glass. And you can even go to exterior, and then you can get some more variations of this glass as well. I think that's better. So I think I should move it up slightly, because it, it, it might be intersecting with the table, which is not looking that good let's move it up slightly yeah you can just try uh, you can just experiment around with these different materials and then you can just choose whichever one you like the best oops my bad I'm sorry you can just apply whichever material you want I think that should be good I think that looks pretty decent alright so one thing which I think I should do is maybe change the material of this sofa uh, because right now it's way too dark and as you can see in this one in this reference you can see that the color is very light and i personally prefer that i think it looks very nice so we can maybe go ahead and uh now we basically have two options in this right the first one is going to be to obviously add another separate material to this or we could simply just modify the material which we currently have which is what i'm going to do uh so i'm just going to select any of this ob any of these objects with this material applied and we can just double click this material right here once we are in the material editor, we can just simply open um, this. And now we can just go down and sort of use tint. Click this button right here. And in the tint, we can just make it whatever we want. So we can basically change the color of this. However, the problem is that we don't really have anything, any um, option to sort of make it brighter. I think we should maybe remove the color map. Is that going to get rid of the texture as well? Yes, unfortunately, it's going to remove the texture as well. So I, th I don't think this material is very editable. So I think I should just add another separate material to this. 
uh i'm just gonna go to add quixel content and i think we should add like a fabric material to this instead of leather i think that's gonna look pretty good um and let me just go back let's search for cloth or actually fabric instead let's see what it comes up with um so we have a few options or we can simply go to home surfaces and then we can go down to um yeah fabric and then we have these options as well i think this should be fine furniture fabric and also another thing which i have to mention here is that all these mega scans materials are way better uh, than other materials because they're fully editable i'm just going to be showing you how what that means in just a second so let me just add that in our scene and then let's apply it to all the assets of the sofa and so it might not look that great at the moment but we can make tweaks to this and we can we basically have a lot of flexibility with these materials so what i want to do with this is that firstly i'm just going to make it slightly um smaller in texture i'm going to increase the tiling because it looks the texture looks way too big right now uh, so i'm just going to double click this material to open it and then we can just click this tiling offset thing right there then we can maybe set it to two i think two should be nice yeah i think now it looks pretty realistic and then we can just simply uh check this albedo controls and then we can just increase the brightness and do whatever we want with this material and we can also add a tint to this we can add a color to this which can be whatever i want however i don't think we need to add any color to this i think we just need to increase the brightness to something like 1.5 just make it slightly brighter i think that should be pretty good um and yeah i think that should be it yep how about 1.6 i think that should be fine and the base of the sofa, I have to add a material to that as well. Let me add a um, a metal material to this. I'm just going to maybe add, oops, my bad. Maybe add this material right there. I think that should be good. Yep, it looks pretty good. All right. Um, right, I'm not really liking this glass material on this vase though. Let me apply something else to this. How about we add like a marble material to this as well? I think that should be good. Um, so Let me just search for if I have any marble materials. I think this should be a good option. Yeah, I think it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? Yep, that makes it look pretty good. And this as well, I think this looks good. Now let's move on to this lamp. So for the lamp, I'm going to need a fabric material, which I think we can maybe use the one which came with this automotive materials pack. So let's um go to interior and then textile. Let's try this one. I think this looks really good. You can obviously choose uh, other ones as well. You have a lot of options in this one, in this pack. Uh, I think that was good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now let's apply materials to the, uh, the other parts of this as well. So the inside part, I think that should have the same material as this. And maybe we can add a metal material to uh, the other parts. Maybe this one, like that. And let's apply the metal material to this as well. I think that looks really nice. In this part right here we can we can maybe make it brass we can maybe give it that brass material or actually we can make this whole thing golden as well if you we want i think that should look better yeah i think that looks a lot better all right cool so that looks perfect as well and let's change this material as well let's slightly modify this material as well let's make it brighter so i'm just going to open this like that double click and then we can again i don't think we have an option uh to make it brighter in this one uh, in the in these settings so um i don't think there's much we can do maybe you can increase yeah i can do that i think that looks a lot better something like that should be pretty good and all right so our scene is looking pretty good it's coming together pretty well uh for the floor we can maybe try a wooden floor as well we can go to add quixel content search for wooden floor Let's see what options do we have. I think this one is a really good option. Let's try to add that. Let's apply it. And let's see how it looks. Um, it's pretty dark at the moment. How about we reduce the tiling? Firstly, to something like 3 and 3. And then we can maybe increase the brightness of this. And the way we do that is by going to albedo controls and brightness. 
disagree with that. Um, I, I'm not really liking that. Actually, you know what? I think it's good. I think I'm going to go with that. We can maybe reduce the saturation of this to something like 0 0.6. I think that... Actually, I think 0 0.8 should be fine. I think that's pretty good, yeah. Press save all. We can obviously come back to marble uh, if we want. Um, And actually, I'm going to try the marble one once again to see which one looks good. I think the wooden floor looks a lot better, in my opinion. Yeah, I think our scene is looking pretty good at the moment. And I think I should maybe increase the brightness of our whole scene right now. Because it's getting pretty dark. And exposure, I think something like 13 should... Actually, 13 is way too overexposed. 12 should be good, maybe. Or 11.5. I think 11.5 is the sweet spot. Let's see if we have any materials left. I think we should apply materials to this light as well. Um, So... Uh, I'm just going to go up to this um, automotive materials library and let's apply a metal material to this i think that should be good or maybe a darker metal material something like that i think that's better and then we can apply i think that material to the bulb now we're not going to have this light turned on uh we're not going to have any lights turned on because obviously it's daylight and it doesn't make sense to have any lights turned on when it's day let's apply a material a black material to this as well that's looking good and then, yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go. Uh, what I am going to do is that I'm going to maybe increase the indirect lighting of this scene a little bit. Let me apply the material to this as well. That's going to be that. And let's apply a marble material to this ways. Uh, so I'm just going to go down. And stain. Actually, no. Um, I think that should be a good marble for this. Or it's not really mapping that well, so I'm not going to use that. Uh, what I'm going to do instead is that I'm going to be using... Uh, how about this one? I think that's a lot better. And for these um, branches, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be using just one of these materials. Just one which looks good. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. And for these... Um, sort of leaves i'm going to use that same exact material doesn't really matter that much it just it should just be a dark material which should just make it blend in with the whole scene and so this is how our scene looks in the what do you call it in the lit mode and this is how it looks in your path tracing mode it's pretty similar i would say yeah it's pretty simple similar however when i'm if i was rendering like uh what do you call it if i was rendering a single frame i would definitely use path tracing however if i was rendering like an animation then i would certainly use um what do you call it the lit mode because of how uh, much it improves the rendering time uh, i'm just going to select this wooden floor material and let me just reduce the roughness of this slightly so i'm just going to go to the max roughness check it and set it maybe 0 0.7 i think that looks a lot more realistic maybe 0 0.5 also, I just wanted to show you guys how your scene would look without ray tracing. Um, so you can just so I'm just gonna go to edit project settings and I'm just gonna search for ray tracing. If I just turn it off, you're gonna see that it's not that big of a difference. However, obviously it does make your scene look slightly worse. Um, so yeah, there's that. And I think our whole scene looks pretty decent at the moment. What I'm gonna do now is that I'm just gonna make sure that we don't have anything which is without a texture. We have made sure to apply a texture to everything in our scene. And maybe this is too big, isn't it? Maybe we can make it a little smaller. Something like that, I think should be better. Yeah, I think that's better. All right, so I think our scene, lo scene is looking pretty good. And now we can maybe move on to the next part, which is going to be uh, finalizing our lighting and doing some post-processing, making the scene look a lot better. Uh, so let's begin with that. So firstly, I'm just going to be finalizing my directional light position. Let me turn off the rotation snapping so that I can make a final decision as to where I want the sunlight to be. I think this is a good position. I'm just going to undo that. I think that's the that's the correct position for us. Um, I'm going to go to my exponential height fog. I'm going to go down 
to volumetric fog and i'm just going to turn that on because that's just going to get rid of some of those weird fog effects we're getting at the moment i think that's a lot better now we can simply go to our post process volume we can go down to color creating global and then we can just increase the contrast slightly maybe 1.2 i think that's going to make our scene pop out a lot more which is perfect and you can increase the saturation if you want but i think i'm good uh i'm just gonna go to my direction light again let me increase the indirect lighting intensity to maybe five i think that's better and then we can maybe reduce the exposure compensation to 11. i think that looks that's looking pretty good make sure um that your scene is saved save all and i think our scene is looking pretty decent you might want to increase uh this to something like 11.3 i think that's better and yeah i think that's basically it so now we can move on to the next step which is going to be setting up a camera and with that camera we're going to be creating an animation all right so thank you for watching this course up till here this was the free preview on youtube uh for uh, to watch the entire course you're going to have to go to udemy and you're going to have to take this course right here you can find a link of this course in the description you've just seen the videos to up till here uh, all these projects and everything is remaining uh so if you want to continue your learning and if you want to take your unreal engine 5 skills to the next level then be sure to enroll in this course uh it's going to be really good it's going to be really fun and i'm sure you are going to learn quite a lot right so that's basically it for this one guys thanks a lot for watching and i will see you in the full course. Goodbye.